everybody, and welcome back to Tabletop Notch. We have kind of a funky little special episode tonight. Mm -hmm. um, because of safety precautions and an overabundance of caution on our part, we are making sure that everybody has time to quarantine and stay safe and do all the things, so John and Riley will not be joining us tonight. However, we have a little unique opportunity. The party is split along those lines, conveniently enough. Um, so we are uh, going to hang out with Orba and Graven, starting in Wamparani Na, and see what they're up to. And then next week, we will have the big final full party hurrah Ooh. for the final episode of season one of Tabletop Notch before we move time. into season two. Speaking of which, I will give the little spiel, as always, of what that means. After our final 100th episode of season one, we're going to be getting what we call season two. Same characters, same campaign, but a new major, major, major story arc. That's a great place to hop on for people who want to join in, but are still catching up with some of the old episodes. We're going to do some lore recap, as well as a recap of where the characters are at in the story. New art, new music, new intro, all kinds of stuff. Um, so all in all, really great opportunity to jump in for people who want to jump on this ride with us. Um, so once again, that is happening. Uh, next week is going to be the final episode of season one, episode 100. There will be one week of a little talk back where we're going to chat about the campaign thus far, mm. answer some questions. We'll take questions from the Discord and, and some other social media places. Um, and then the week after that will be officially season two of Tabletop Notch. We already have some great guests lined up. We're so, so excited about that. We haven't had a guest since... Who was the last guest? Chris. Chris? Oh my, since Wangami Seriously? the Dwarf. Chapter 46? Wow, that's... Oh my we've done more than half of the campaign without a guest. And we used to have them like fairly great. That's, yeah. That feels so weird. That it that's does. Been on. But we're, we're so excited to go back to have some great guests on the stream. Um, but before we dive in, um, things yeah. announcements? Uh, okay. So, let's start with point. Oh my yeah, god. Except it's way oh over no, there. Oh no, it's like yep, way past the papers. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you are new to the stream and you're on a desktop watching Twitch, use your cursor to hover over our stream and a little Q is going to appear <laughs> it's like over that, there, that down way. over there. Uh, and it's going to have like the quests that are kind of just on the horizon, maybe just for today's session or the next couple sessions, just things that are immediately on our character's agenda or minds. So please feel free to utilize that as you wish. Also, oh, I have to do, I have to do John's thing. I can do it if you want. Go! Oh, <laughs> <laughs> we have a podcast for him. Um, <laughs> well, that was good. You should have kept going. We uh, are available uh, Tuesday morning, usually, if somebody uploads them. <laughs> Um, well, it's usually, it's usually yeah. there. <laughs> uh, on all of your favorite podcast apps, including Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, I think. Yeah. I hope I'm not making that up. No, I think that sounds right. Okay. Um, uh, uh, please uh, find us there if you can't catch us live. If you like to do it, just audio. Uh, uh, rate us if that po podcast thing allows that, please. Um, <laughs> yeah. And. Uh, uh, God, what else does he say about podcasts? uh YouTube? He says something about YouTube. YouTube premieres. Oh, and YouTube premiere happens on f typically Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern, where we re-air the most current episode for YouTube. We're usually in the chat, talking, not spoiling things that are about to happen, and uh, just generally uh, making merry in the chat there. So yeah. join us then also, please. We, we also have a Discord that I'm going to... Boop. Yes. Uh, uh, growing every day. Uh, there is some amazing things going on there. Most of all, I think, I shouldn't say that, but <laughs> one of the great things, every time I go on there, there's new memes and oh. new art. Some amazing, amazing stuff that people are posting there of, of the characters and moments in the campaign that we, like, forget about that, <laughs> that pop back up in, in, in beautiful... Uh, uh, form there so find us there if you um, want all of your opinions about characters confirmed in meme format there's been some oh my god well encapsulated yeah. memes yes uh, yes so, but ones. yes and the artwork bl blows us away i mean it's no secret to say we have a little text chain where we text each other when new art shows up it's like yeah we can't believe it every time there's new awesome art uh, uh of characters of NPCs, NPCs. Yeah, some, yeah. yeah. some really special Little stuff going on there. So please, find us yeah, there. check it out. If for no other reason than to tell those people that their work is incredible. Yes. 
Um, next thing. On next thing. Day. I'm going to try to blow through as many subscribers and bidders. I've been trying to keep track, but here we go. Uh, Hartman underscore uh, subbed while we were offline. So did Cheesy Quesadilla 69420. I was really hoping to say that one uh, live. Uh, Mahi Mahi has gifted already six subs, I believe. Havoc has gifted uh, five as well as a tier three sub. Hopeful Optimus is a sub. Uh, Keeson84 gifted two subs. Pogo Dogo gifted four subs. Flying Minister just did a hundred biddos. And God damn it, Mahi Mahi Boxer, you did <laughs> Mahi you did Mahi, more? I think, did more. Also, Sir Mancelot just did five. <sighs> Sir and Mancelot. My, my another one of course fantastic yes. so again Incredible. thank you all so so very much it's it's just we have a silly generous uh sheet on our guest book now we it's do? for it's for yeah. yes oh it's my God. it's for the silly generous for ye of the silly um generous. obviously we appreciate every little thing but for the folks that are like gifting and stuff like we just wanted to have like a nice little thank you page <laughs> yes. dedicated to so, all of you so thank you thank you guys so 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 much that it really means everything to us um as a, a little treat for your generosity, oh my God. this stream, because we're missing a couple of players, we were like, what can we do um, that has a, a little extra pizzazz? So we're teasing a bit of season two with some incredible brand new artwork of the characters that are currently present here. So please <laughs> welcome we to the weird. stage. Oh. <laughs> welcome to the stage, Graven. And Orba. Uh, so, 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 so cool. <laughs> the new artwork. You'll be able to see Erlen and Saphira soon, as well as the new intro, which will incorporate the new art. But for tonight's stream, you can uh, truly immerse yourselves by looking back and forth between the characters and uh, and allowing yourself to bask in the glory. Um, Leonardo Roberto is the name of the artist. Um, you can find him on leorob.artstation.com. Uh, that has his work. It's so, 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 so good. We've looked through so many people, not to say that there aren't millions of great artists, but <laughs> we love this guy's stuff. He was a dream to work with. And this is the first time we're debuting it. We've actually yeah. had it for a while, but we've been working on it with the intro and stuff. It's the first time we're showing it on screen. So I, I mean, I think this was commissioned before the fan art Discord even existed. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. So, um, it's been in the works for a while. <laughs> so really, really cool stuff. Man, look at those. Look at those oh. burns. Look at those. Oh. Oh, oh, burns. <laughs> And Mahi Mahi, he gifted another sub. Thank you so very much. Thank you so much. <laughs> the Doofin Schmertz booty cheeks. <laughs> oh, that tickled. That tickled Graven. <laughs> Doofin Schmertz booty cheeks. Booty cheeks. Thank um, you. All right. <laughs> Thank you, We've taken care of much, much business. Anything else? Any final thoughts before we toss it over to the end? Uh, uh, no. The second to last time you'll ever see this I intro. know. I know. Wild. Um, Maybe we'll do it for the talk. Back. Happy Pride yeah. Month? Oh, yeah, oh, happy yeah. Pride yes. Month. Happy Pride. Happy Pride Month, yeah, absolutely. Um, all right, yeah. awesome. We're going to flow over to the intro, and when we come back, we will dive into a Habsy episode, <laughs> chapter 99 of A Pit Beneath the Veil. Mm -hmm. We'll be back. 99! Come on. <laughs> Chapter 98. All that tit for tat. <clears throat> Orba was stopped short on her stroll through Nagarwas by the man who organized last night's fight in Bosworth's basement. Hayden was on his way to the ports to sell off an item that Shakar had stashed in a drawer prior to his death, a myconid extract capsule, mm -hmm. which was of little use to the average citizen beyond its high monetary value. Looking to offload the X-cap as quickly as possible, Hayden was open to a trade, 
but in return, he wanted a key that he'd seen Erland loot from Shikar's body, so before an exchange could be made, Orba would have to consult with her companions. The next stop was Donovan Ainsley's gatehouse, where we were pleased to find his purse removal services free of charge, though as we'd grown accustomed to by now, the meddling gods and their clerics were always poking and prodding and we left uncertain of Donovan's motivations, or whether he had any sense of Orba's reaper status. Just a few blocks away, Graven was tackling the first of several Broken Crown contracts that we hoped to complete before leaving the city, supervising a contract negotiation between Lem Stonehand and Mrs. Megalore. To guarantee some additional hazard pay, a scuffle broke out between Graven and Mrs. Megalore's bodyguard all according to plan, except for the part where Graven had to pull his punches thanks to his opponent's fragile stomach. <laughs> a loss didn't prevent Lem from upholding his promise of bonus gold, but it may have factored into his willingness to allow us to speak with Bermice Yord, whose intimate knowledge of Nolan's woods and the legend of Demosset was of particular interest to Graven. At battle ready, Saphira got the bad news that Sarn Darrow was unavailable for further training but he was kind enough to leave behind some written instructions that could help develop her skills as we traveled, provided we could locate a suitable, spiritually conducive environment. On the other end of Navikapura, Erlen's investigating took him to the home of Tessa Pleasance, whose name had shown up on one of Marvin Bishop's diagrams, and whose prickly demeanor was amplified by her displeasure at being outfitted with a band of the benefactor. We had learned that Tessa had been romantically, or at least physically, involved, with both Marvin and Rugeni Grimari, the latter of which had developed a fondness that was not reciprocated, even going so far as to provide Tessa with a way to contact him when he was reached overseas. Immediately recognizing the communication method as another mirrored inscription spell, Erland was keen to get his hands on it, as well as the spectacles that Marvin had commissioned from his blueprints. Oh, yeah. But the faulty glasses had been sold to Palomar Franco, and Tessa wasn't going to give anything up for free to a complete stranger. If we wanted the mirrored inscription page, we'd have to ease her debt, which meant paying a visit to Niels Bogus, who wasn't exactly someone we considered a friend. As Erlen took the steed away back to Naupa to solicit Saphira's help, Graven and Orba were working on contract number two, and managed to secure a sizable reward from the bombastic Bruce Fitzroy, though it came at the expense of dipping deep into our magical reserves. After agreeing to go in his stead, Saphira was surely more welcome at Bottle than Erland would have been, but Niels was stubbornly principled about Tessa's band of the Benefactor, refusing to accept payment on her behalf. We did get the sense that Niels' opinion could be swayed by perhaps obtaining some rare ingredients for his potions, but the only thing that came immediately to mind was pure myconid extract, which seemed difficult, if not impossible, to obtain on short notice. Saphira brought this information back to Erland, while the others brought their spoils to the Broken Crown, and as we prepared to chip away at our own benefactor band debts, we asked ourselves, Is there someone else who might know what alchemical components Niels might be interested in? Whether guided by fate or fortune, would Orba ever consider turning to Kuzni in a time of need? And by day's end, which was more likely to be soiled, Erland's reputation with the Elatrians or Mrs. Megalore's bodyguard's pants. We find out now, oh on chapter 99, of A Peak Beneath the Veil. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. After a lively and lucrative detour through the Fangle area, you reconnect with the busiest part of the thoroughfare. You make your way to the bridge where the busy road coming up from the south brings merchants and travelers from the Honey Coast, Cateel, Netter's Nook, and beyond. Many of them have the wide-eyed faces and large traveling bags of those likely seeking new opportunities, the continued expansion of the ports far from a secret, and the lack of a central governing body perhaps appealing to those coming from the stricter confines of Mukmu and Tuktu. A pair of riders on horseback are wearing dirty but distinguishable blue and white tabards, if you're not mistaken, such colors and patterns are an indication of official service in Urin Chupa, and you think about your own exhaustingly long trek that you made after breaching the walls of the South City. So some people who served in some capacity have made it all the way up from the from the wow. South City here to Navikapura. From like the city, like not Broken Crown, like yeah, no, like like Urin Chupa, unlike Navikapura, has like an official city watch. 
That's what I yeah, thought. Yeah, okay. so the, yeah. that isn't Broken Crown. It isn't Gentle right. Boy. They have their own employed city huh. watch. And they might not be official employees. Could be they formally worked for them, but they have yeah. kind of dirty tabards of having worked okay. in some capacity for, for the city of Urnchu. You start to cross over the water, and you see on your left that the Amberbelly Soup Kitchen is busy at this time. A long line snaking its way to the open windows for a complimentary meal. And Chip himself is positioned a little further down the road, appealing to new arrivals for donations. You can see him kind of holding out a little hat, and he's sort of giving his little spiel, maybe explaining that the place might be named after whatever name that you're willing to throw into the hat. A couple names of our own once uh, put into the mix. Terrible. I was proud of mine, thank you very much. Sorry. It's going to be named the Wolf House again. <laughs> Beyond the incoming and outgoing traffic, the BC building is fairly calm. A couple of armored officers moving idly about in the vicinity of the door, and someone on a second floor balcony is pulling at a rope. They're actually raising a flag, a large flag, a rare overt display of their trademark blacks and purples. It has the colors you've seen around town that Broken Crown officers don't generally advertise their association so openly because it has kind of a sour reputation here, other than um, the Lieutenant Colonel himself, who proudly displays the colors on his arm. Mm. So someone's raising this flag right here that has the colors of the Broken Crown, and you start to approach that little yard just in front of the door. So you guys have a moment here, Just you just crossed over the bridge, you can see the Broken Crown station on your right. The city is yours. Okay. <laughs> well. Just a minute. Uh. I suppose we can find out what the other contracts are that we can get with the writ. I don't know much, how much time we'll have to take them out, but... Oh, you have the writ? Yes. Oh, I good. I got it from Erland Oh, good. Time. Yeah. Okay. Well... But let's focus on handing these in for now, I suppose. Sure, yeah. I don't know if we need to contact somebody specifically if we're paying off debt, so that's a question to ask. Well, we, you were there when... What yeah. was the person's name who... Set you to this task? Well, L Lieutenant Colonel Warber, right. but I don't know if he deals with... But I would imagine he would l have left some information with whoever takes in the contracts. Yes, I suppose. I guess let's find out. Yeah. I'm trying to remember... Oh, no. If Erland gave his real name. I think he did. I'm you pretty think sure he did. he did. Yeah. I feel like you would have remembered if he had lied. Would I? Uh, Those are hard to keep track of. I mean that it would have been a significant thing for you to sit there in front of a lieutenant colonel and for him to lie to his face. You probably would have been... It would have sparked something. No, honestly, it probably wouldn't have. Uh, it's all right. <laughs> well, maybe we won't even bring up the name at first. We'll just say our But friend. yeah, maybe they'll recognize me because I was there. Okay. Sorry. It's fine. Uh, say sorry to Erlen, not to me. I'm pretty sure. I'm doing much better now. I'm pretty sure. He is the one that is more in trouble now. Yes. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure it's, it's his name. Sora's going to start walking forward. <laughs> start to head towards the door. And again, there's those guards kind of idly. In the, they give you just a kind of a passing look and a nod. They, they're not stopping you from entering. The door is even cracked open to signify that it's sort of open to the public there. Mm -hmm. Griff watches her go in and just... <laughs> Eyes wide for a minute and then Are you follows. just follows? Oh, yeah, you're and then her. follows. <laughs> He's leaving me alone. Yeah, no, no. Just taking a minute. You reach forward taking... and close the door. <laughs> just taking a minute to be like... <laughs> and walking in. You foreheaded me? No, 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 myself. Yeah, I know. Oh. <laughs> Foreheading <laughs> someone Orba, Orba, else? Orba, come here. Orba, look. <laughs> no. Look at me. You begin to head inside the Broken Crown building. You find it very much as you've seen it before, a number of rows of desks, people filling out their forms. Ken Reggie diligently at his post at the civilian <laughs> services desk. And by diligently, I mean, you know, flicking papers and, and pencils and inks around as he fills his time idly. But uh, as you start to approach and he hears the footsteps kind of coming in, he looks up. And he's already sort of, as his head is moving up, starting to give the usual spiel. Hello, I'm Supervisor Reg. You just can't keep yourself away from the Broken Crown, can you? I'll just reach into my bag, take out the writ, and just walk up and... Fantastic. 
Since you wouldn't take my word, I suppose I would prove it. All right. Actually, before we begin, we have And he some... sort of makes a show. He had, like, pulled a piece of paper close to him. He makes a show of, like, oh. A little less attitude, Ken, please. We have some contracts to give you. All right. And what are we turning in? I've got... So I've got something from Lem. I think and you got something from both of them. Um... I, like Bruce. a piece of paper. Yes. Like, so, okay. I think from Bruce too. Uh, yeah. He also filled in something that's specified as total. I'll take both of them out. Now, these are not only going to us. Some of this is staying here. A gift for me? We have a mutual friend who has a debt to pay. Lieutenant Colonel Warber. Lieutenant Colonel Warber. We'll know exactly what it's about. I heard something about this. He reaches into... Takes a... Half-elf, correct? Yeah. Erland? Yeah, Erland. <laughs> Raven just looks up. <laughs> he sort of... I don't see a half-elf. We're paying on his behalf. Well, the point of the debt was for him to pay it off. No... Right. We worked together on this, and we are handing it in. You worked with him on this thing that you're turning in right now? Yes. Make a deception check. <laughs> I did not anticipate <laughs> this. Fifteen. Fifteen. <clears throat> well, the Broken Crown could use the money, that's for sure. How much are you giving us? 147. He sort of takes... Uh, you, you give him the papers that you were giving uh, yes, him. Yes, so that has the amounts that you guys were paid. Mm -hmm. So he does a quick kind of using a quill and, and ink calculation of what that 30% of that is. He does a quick tabulation. Okay, let's see here. 490 total. 30%, 147. If I'm not mistaken, what you have remaining is two, six, five, and five silver, correct? Yes, that number matches what All we right. have. All right, we'll take your 30%. Well go. done, I suppose. I'll go into my coin purse because I've got all the money. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I thought I need to say that. And I'll <laughs> put it on the table. All right. So that was, um, and just to clarify, that was a completion of Lamb, correct? He does not need further assistance? Um, Lamb is completed, yes. yes. And Mr. Fitzroy, did he say that he did not want additional inquiries? He appeared to be still in need. Still in need. All right, I'll make a note of that. All right. All right, we've got your accounts settled up for that at least. Um, all right, anything else? I do have a question for you regarding the the tally you just made, actually. So, if right. we were to go somewhere else, a separate location, uh, like another city, yes. and start to pay off some debt there, how how long does it take for you all to kind of um, communicate with one another? Well, it depends on which city you go to. We correspond with the other Broken Crown stations very frequently, but it does take time for a courier to get from place to place. But that is something you update one another on, correct? Yes. R right now, we've already sent someone out with uh, debts to be owed, so there's someone on their way right now to inform Dilasoon and Tuktu and Mukmu. And w when we received, you know, this, this new task, uh, we weren't totally given, like, the, the rules... Of, of it? Like, is there anything that we need to know about Rules in what way? donning a, a, a ring of such kind? Well, you have to declare yourself when you reach a new major city with a broken crown station. Oh? So you go and, and you say what? You say that you have a band of the benefactor. Even if you're just, like, passing through? No, if you're staying for an extended time or plan to attempt to purchase any kind of wares or goods. Okay, and if you if you are to leave a city, like say if us as a group with this gentleman, leave? you don't have to declare leaving now. Okay, but it's just to just upon arrival. It's just to the broken crown. No other like local militia or anything or shop shop. Mm, for this one, no. It's a it's an indication with the broken crown. Some are different, but for this one, no. You must only make your intention known to the broken crown. 
Okay. But other others will hold to it. Even Deny they... him services? Yes, they will. Or risk getting in trouble. In most places, he sort of looks around at the shabby interior of this particular stage. In most places, the Broken Crown has a little more sway. So, shop owners are not allowed to deal with... Certain goods are restricted. Weapons, magical supplies. Okay. It's not like, oh, you can exercise your right to not um, service. Oh, no, you can get in trouble for selling someone goods, restricted goods, who have a ban of the benefactor. Understood. Again, in places not here. Right. Where people often don't seem to care. They like their lawlessness up here in the north. Hmm. Yes, I, I, I've, I've gathered that. Did you ever think about setting out on your own, maybe to one of these other cities that has a little bit more respect for people like you? All the time. So why stay here? I wasn't originally posted in Avikavora, but that is where I am sent now. And hopefully, if I keep doing my job to their satisfaction, I will be sent somewhere of more import. Well, you can't be too good at your job here if you want to go somewhere else. Why, why would they send you somewhere else if you were so... I've been stuck in positions before that I was too good at, and, and, and they didn't let me go to other more challenging things. I don't think I'm in danger of being too good at my job. Got it. Did you piss somebody off? What else can I do for you? I suppose just the writ contracts, please. All right, let's have a look. (laughs) Well, I've just got the two here. Um... That's beyond the uh, other regular contracts available. You've already heard from those. Um, Lieutenant Colonel Warber is looking for additional swords to recapture a broken crown outpost that was seized by bandits on the road north from Naupa. Discretion is mandatory. Combat is likely, but not guaranteed, if the bandits can be sufficiently frightened into surrender. 125 gold per hireling as long as they can prove a minimum level of competency and don't desert the mission. Payment is only upon return to Navikapura, but you can name a recipient prior to leaving that will receive your sum if you are killed in combat. This was one of the writ contracts. This wasn't one of the regular ones. This was a writ contract, yes. All right. Heard it before, have you? Yes, because I've had writ for a while. Okay, next one. Okay, this one's new. It just came in this morning. Uh, Ichabus Altamari, one of the Yaku Walkanka. They're still around. It's looking for travelers to activate dormant lodestones across the continent. The lodestones were used very long ago by explorers to assist in navigation, but have since become inactive. Ichabus would like to restore their magnetic properties so they can be used as guides once again. More information available for Mr. Altamari at his home, the northernmost end of Break Pier. And payment is 400 gold per lodestone activated. How many lodestones are there? Uh, it does not say. These are... Would I be familiar with lodestones? Yeah, uh, the concept of lodestones, yes, definitely. They're... Uh, give me a history check about these ones in particular, but while you're doing that, <laughs> the lodestone, uh, certain lodestones me- just means that they, they have sort of magnetic properties to them, but these ones seem to be ones in particular that were used as guides, you know, mm. by using some kind of instrument could point you to lodestones yeah. if they're activated properly. Okay. Magical? Um, More physical than magical. The okay. area that they're in might have some magic to it, but... Like a sacred grove or a... <laughs> <laughs> Not necessarily. An enchanted forest. An enchanted forest or, or a yeah. sparkling Amazing. pool. Amazing. <sighs> Oh, Four. No. Yeah, you don't remember. You you can't tell exactly what he's talking about, mm. but you're familiar with the idea of lodestones. Yes. Green's like, <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> They're rocks. <laughs> big, big rocks. Um, <laughs> Get out of here. Um, that 
So if you want to talk to that old fool, go on and ask him about his loads. That oh, sounds promising, Orbo. That is something that we could... Yes. Go, ...as we travel around. Where did you say his residence was? The uh, northern end of Break Pier. I think we have a, a way to indicate... Is that here in Wamparani Na? Yes, yes. Okay. Good to know. You're familiar with the neighborhoods of Wamparani Na. I haven't... Only been here for a few days. Let's see. It's right... <laughs> Oh. oh. Oh, map. Map, map, map. Secret map. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I know. I know where here. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm intimately familiar. <laughs> That's where the general's, general's general is. Uh, all yes, all those at the too. northern end. So, yeah, it's actually his place is technically still part of Break Pier all the way up here. Oh, what the hell? Break Pier is that Wait, like so strip. This is Whoa. the docks, and Break Pier is. I already have that name written down. You do already have that name written down. Why do you already have? Why that? do I have that name written <laughs> God down? God damn it, Craven! Ica, it just says Ica. <laughs> Icabus Altamari. <laughs> Anthony. Oh uh, yes, my notes coming in, coming it, in handy. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> point one more time for me. I didn't get to see uh, this. This little sort of diamondy okay. shaped thing all the way to the top. Ichabus. Ichabus Altamari. Shit. I'm so mad at you right now. It's fine, it's fine. Okay, Okay, well, that seems like a promising contract. Excellent. (sighs) Quick rundown of the non-written ones. I know that there's um, a skeleton contract. Yeah, skeleton... Busting, yes. busting up some skeletons with yep. Ver- Veronica Moore. And the others, very quickly. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I've already given these to you. Thorsten Ramaker is looking for some help yep. involving a string of Next. deaths. Next. Uh, mm-hmm. And Bruce Fitzroy, you said his Next. contract. And then the only other one was Mr. Stonehand. So. Got it. Got it. All right. Good. <sighs> well, well, it has been a pleasure. Thanks. Be just good enough at your job, so that hopefully you have brighter things ahead. Yeah, I'll try that. That sounds excellent. Any good words we can put in in other cities with anyone in particular? Oh. You want to put in a good word for me? Sure. I'm not trying to be funny, (laughs) but I would say our professional relationship has been hot and cold. What uh, guarantee exactly do I have that you're not going to go to one of these names and say, oh, I met Ken Reggie. What an asshole he was. I suppose you have... faith. I have none of that. Have a wonderful day. He goes oh, back. He looks not. like he looks like for all his sort of half-assing some aspects of his job, he has the accounts in order. He immediately kind of starts tabulating the numbers. So you can tell he's got a mind for some of the bureaucratic work of the Broken Crown. So th- that sort of thought you had about maybe rubbing someone the wrong way. Like, he doesn't seem incompetent mm. when he tries to do his mm-hmm. job. Like, you've seen people who are bumbling idiots <laughs> at their job. He doesn't necessarily seem to fit that mold. He's right. kind of competent in his own way. Right. But don't that's cool. That's a cold relationship, huh? What's that all about? We, we're walking out at this point. Sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure Just standing right in front of him. <laughs> We've had a yeah. couple of... Um, yeah, walking out. Uh, yes, uh, Ken and I I guess bumped heads a few times. Mm. This frustrated me. Mm. But the writ, he wouldn't he remember. I had the writ the first time, came back without it. He bleh, wouldn't tell me the. Anyway. That sounds like he was just doing his job. Taking his side. I'm not taking anybody's side. Well. Look, there's red tape involved when you're in when you're when you're when you're doing these kinds of record keeping tasks. Red tape. Yeah, like you got to follow the rules, and if you don't, then you're gonna get in trouble. Hmm. Sounds exhausting. I've had to send many people away. From what? From when I worked. You worked a... a job like that? Well, I was a scribe. You sat at a desk? No, they wouldn't... Told people no. 
I wouldn't say no. I prioritized certain people when they were nice to me. For what? What, what were you gatekeeping? I wasn't gatekeeping anything. I was a scribe. Most of the time. So what did you deny of them? I guess I didn't really... I played favorites, is what I'm trying to say. You could have favored me. Yeah. <sighs> Anybody could favor you if they're, if, if they're trying to just do their job. Cheese worked for me. Cheese? Yeah. People brought me cheese. I mean, if I had brought him a item of food, I might have been <laughs> well, in better luck. N well, it might have to be a little fancier. I didn't have much. He seems like a little well better off than what I was. Well, he seemed to like to drink. Oh. I saw him stumbling out of the deck the other night. Oh, perhaps like a, yes, a bottle of wine or something would be a good thing to do. Hmm. It's not bribery. It's just a, you know, little, little nudge. Remember that. Good. Um, well. So, what next? Next? Yeah, look over. The the militia uh, <laughs> place is not that far from here. Uh, it's like over the bridge. Um, it's back over the bridge, yeah. Over the bridge. <clears throat> I do think we should check in with um, Icabus. Yeah. I know that name, that name has come up recently, and I don't know why. Oh, really? Yes. Give me a history check. Oh, thank you. Give me a remembering check. Don't be a dumbass, Anthony. Check. Four again! You are so dumb. What You feel like you've heard it not just, like, very recently, like, um, like maybe idle chatter at that bar or something. What, um, what's the, he said, Yaka what? Hmm? He said Ichabus of the Yaku something. Yaku Wakanka. Yeah, what's that? That you are familiar with. So that's an old, like, even the families, not the individual uh, uh, guards themselves, The there were a number of families that even preceded Emperor Pachacomic, sort of the unification of the of Antisuyu, that served as a kind of coast guard, the Yaku Wakanka. It actually means water shield. That's what it oh, translates cool. to. And they would keep the coasts sort of safe from pirates or sea creatures that would come. They're far, far out of date at this point. When Emperor Pachacomic took over, uh, he sort of had his own well-regulated army and, and navy, so mm -hmm. they largely fell out of use. But there's still a few of the families like kicking around that, that, that once their uh, fathers and grandfathers and grandmothers and mothers served in the Akawakan. So Ichabus, presumably, one of the, this lineage yeah. of and if you paid attention to our chapter one recap, <laughs> they came up there. Um, the Yakuwakanka, they it was a it was a kind of a coast guard, but before the emperor, many many years ago. Oh, I wasn't even sure that they still existed. I, I think you noticed Ken make a comment about that. Oh yeah, they seemed like he didn't have much respect for it. Yeah, in fact, they were the ones that before. Would I would I know about the, the connection to Mike with them? Uh, no. Okay, <laughs> then I will not continue yeah. down that that path that I was about. Yeah, to. not that specifically. Okay. Yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> but just drop some lore that Graham doesn't know. I'm <laughs> sneaking in. Um, yes, I'm surprised that they still exist as well, or that they're practicing it in, in some way. I don't know. Oh, okay. But well, that's uh, very interesting. I should. I should stop by Thorsten on the way there. Yeah. He's probably had a rough couple of days. Oh, the poor guy. Maybe. Not as rough as my couple of days. But... No, of course. <sighs> Let's go. Let's go check it out. Yeah, may I join you? Maybe he's still there. Please. Okay. You guys start to walk. So you leave that little sort of courtyard area just out. It's not really a courtyard. A little lawn area just outside the Broken Crown uh, offices. And as you step outside, you see the same bustling road directing people across the bridge and into the city. It's seldom few have pivoted westward before the river. Sort of understandable, given that as far as you know, there isn't much along this row of buildings. There's the Broken Crown, Reciprocity, and the Micral Den that you've been to. But other than that, there isn't a ton of like places of business to come visit on this south bank of the river. And your thoughts as you're kind of thinking about this are interrupted, actually, by another recognizable face that's kind of coming in your direction very noticeably because there are not a lot of people moving along this old dirt road here. 
It's one that you're perhaps less personally invested in. It's an elf with unusually long ears that come to a very fine point on the ends, almost like the leaves of a dracona plant or a palm frond. It's the elf that you saw tracking the gear lawn when mm -hmm. you're coming up from the south. And he has in his hand a rolled up piece of parchment that based on some of the markings look like it might be sort of a map or some kind of uh, detailed top topography of the area that he might be kind of marking up as he, as he moves around. And he's, he recognizes you immediately as you sort of head in his direction. You see his ears kind of like involuntarily just perk Aww. at the, not in a kind of like excited, just in a recognition, <laughs> <laughs> just in a recognition kind of way, sort gotcha. of unusually long elven ears. Ah, I thought I might see you all again. It is my experience that hunters have a habit of crossing paths when there is good hunting to be had. Greetings. Muir, I believe. Yes, good memory. Graven. Orba. And the half-elves that you traveled with, I hope they did not succumb to their tiefling quarry, making the reason they are not present with you now. They are well, thank you for asking. Hmm. I'm glad to hear it. How did your tracking go? My diligence has paid off. Oh. I believe I've located where the Girlon has made its den. The contract was not issued by the Broken Crown. He kind of motions to the station behind you. But I thought I might leverage my knowledge and see if the Purple Belts would pay extra for a more permanent solution. I understand that they run a fair amount of supply shipments and valuables up that road, so they might be willing to cough up a little more for the added peace of mind. Ah. The Garlon could simply be killed, yes, as was requested. But it has, if it has offspring or a pack that it travels with, they could easily return, take up the role of the Alpha. Mm -hmm. My experience as a trapper has taught me alternative methods, which I believe could better serve this particular situation. Mm -hmm. Like as in a relocation of the Girolan and or its members? Sort of a relocation, yes. My traps utilize the Haskub flower. Are you familiar with it? Yes. It induces hallucinogenic effects, and then while the creature is pinned in place in one of my traps, I don one of my handcrafted guises designed to terrify the beasts. The creature lives, but it's too frightened to ever return to the area. For some of the reasonably intelligent beasts, they'll communicate to their kin and offspring to stay away, more effective than simple bloodshed in the long run. Hmm. He sort of thinks for a moment, and he reaches and unslings like a bag from his, like a little backpack from his shoulder. He reaches in, and he pulls out what looks like, at first, it just kind of looks like a burlap sack. But he flips it inside out, and then kind of lets it drape down over his head to reveal this grotesque visage of, like, cloth and bone. It has these hollow, sunken burlap eyes and unnervingly spaced teeth that vaguely remind you of the Dolgaunts that you fought mm. back and took to. Kind of this creepy, gummy, little toothy smile. This grin across the burlap uh, sort of sack over his head. Mm. And there's bits of dried skin that have been sewn into the fabric to give it this almost monstrous patchwork appearance. So he has these, <laughs> it like breaks down, it like cuts off right sort of at his collarbone as it sort of <laughs> flumps down. And, and the teeth kind of loosely jingle at the not so scary perhaps on its own and he sort of grabs it and pulls it back up to the top of his head but under the effects of the husku it serves its purpose well I can see how that would be quite off-putting yeah that's gonna haunt my dreams <laughs> mm, I've designed different masks for different creatures through much of my research I've become somewhat of an expert on what would be frightening to different beasts oh <gasps> Cool. May I ask you a couple of questions about this? Please. Always happy to talk about my life's work. Uh, first, how do you come by a continuous supply of fresh Hasku? Uh, difficulty. Hasku grows fairly abundantly where I'm from, which is farther north in the Tunkuri Kualu mountain range. I've come quite a ways south at this point. The problem is the Askub does not last for very long, so I have to track the beast, 
make sure I know where it's going to be, a den, a nest of some kind, and then I have to make a trek myself into the mountains to gather the Hasku. Oh. After finding the Hasku to be so effective, I was forced to dabble in botany. Hasku, as I said, grows in the mountains. It does not travel well, so I've had to seek out methods of prolonging its potency. So far, the most promising solution seems to lie within the Natural Studies Institute in Mukmu, but they have done a poor job replying to my inquiries, much to my disappointment. Mm. How long... Doesn't it only usually last a day? Before it loses its effects. Yes. Yes. Um, you can prolong this uh, by keeping its roots submerged in fertile soil, mixing it with other plants that give off nutrients. This is actually the basis of what they're doing at the Natural Studies Institute. Oh. There's apparently a kind of bamboo plant that they've been experimenting with. One that, while grown in myconid soil, can act as a dispensary for nutrients. If you bury another plant in the same uh, pot or soil as the bamboo, it feeds off these nutrients, allowing the plants to grow and thrive in environments where they normally would not be able to. Mm. Interesting. Interesting. How did you hear of this bamboo plant? Mm -hmm. The Natural Studies Institute does publish its research occasionally, makes its way to Dilisun and beyond. And so it produces materials that the other plant would then take yes, on as fuel? it almost has a way of... Uh, Mimicking the needs of other plants. Oh, that's interesting. Yes. But like I said, they've been difficult to get a hold of. Yes. We were in Mukmu not too long ago, and they did seem to have their hands full. Yes. You tried to stop by the Natural Studies Institute. Uh, yes, we did. Um, there has been some issues with, I believe, like myconid. They suspect myconid poisoning, so their institute has been under attack sometimes, and they've been trying to heal those that might have it. That would explain the lack of correspondence. Yes. I appreciate you telling me. Yeah. That's, that's good to know. Yes, well, if it's useful to you, I hope the information serves you. As I said, that in combination with my expertise of beast fears, is how I would sort of say it, uh, has made me a unique kind of expert in my field. Have you ever um, met a chimera? No. no. No, never encountered one myself. I hope I don't have to. Mm. Something you're looking forward to, perhaps. I wouldn't say looking forward to it, but anything you've heard about about. Well, there was one of my kind, one of the Citravada elves, who claimed to have been caught in a thunderstorm while trekking through the mountains once. He said that a chimera was slowly circling overhead, looking for easy prey caught in the rain. Suddenly there was a great flash of lightning from a storm, that struck dangerously close by, and the bright light must have temporarily blinded one of the creature's heads. It began to panic and attack itself. He surmised that these hybrid creatures might have a particular aversion for inhibited sight and blindness, because they can feel the presence of the other heads, uh, almost feeling as if a hostile creature is nearby, unable to discern that it is indeed one of their own. Just rumor, but... Right. Right. Have that you makes ever, sense. Have you ever heard of being able to turn one of the three against one another? Either by magic or uh, trickery? As I just said. Right. Aside temporarily from blinding the creature confuses it. It thinks that enemies are nearby. Understood. I imagine there are other magical means of uh, manipulating the beast, but that is far beyond my knowledge. How about... and... 
obviously don't know much about chimeras in particular, but any beasts um, that have had any kind of myconid poisoning. I have heard of it, though rare. Not much before, but now that myconid extract has found its way to all corners of the continent. Mm. The one thing that we do know is that it affects different creatures very, very differently. Unlike most of the humanoids of the continent who have sort of understood the way it affects their body, the animals, some of them find it to be panic-inducing, some of them find it to be invigorating, others simply another source of nutrition, food. They get a taste for it, and they seek it out. I don't know anything about chimeras specifically and their interaction with myconid extract. How about in terms of being myconid poisoned, having other creatures, specifically undead creatures, be drawn to that one? Have you heard of that? Sort of raises an eyebrow. That is interesting. Where did you hear that? rumor. Was it now? It was made clear to me from a otherworldly source. Hmm. Well, perhaps you know more than I do. If I had to guess... It's unlikely that the extract itself was the source of the compulsion for the undead to follow. I would surmise, simply a guess and some of my own experience, that this creature, maddened by the myconid extract, may have done something that would cause the undead to follow. Father destroyed a spiritual place, killed its inhabitants, and now the undead follow it. A sort of wandering curse. And it may not be a benefit. It may be a hindrance. A hindrance, yes. The creature may have been running from the undead rather than bringing the undead to it. Right. Right. This is very helpful. Thank you. Anything I can do? We, um, we are headed north soon. Um, yeah, I, I realize you may not want to give away all of the details about your Girolant tracking, but is there anything that we should either stay away from or any other way we can help? My understanding, based on my tracking and reports that I've done. He kind of pats the parchment mm -hmm. kind of at his waist there. He doesn't unfurl it, but he kind of pats it with it. It's making its nest in the woods just to the southwest here from Wamparanina. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't think it's far, so I wouldn't go wandering along the river. Oh, speaking of the river, um, we encountered some sirens. Uh, Yesterday? Harpies. Harpies, sorry. Yesterday? They make their home near the cliffs and the bluffs, yes. Just right. be cautious. We caught this unawares. Yes. Yes. This would not be the only coast that finds harpies to be a plague to them. Oh, that's good to know. Um, have you ever experienced or have knowledge on um, another beast a uh, cold light walker? I've heard of it, yes. Any wanders the mountains yeah. related to the undead that you spoke of. Mm. Oh, not specifically, not what I was speaking of just now, no. A I'm afraid character. if you're looking for weaknesses, you'll have to look for ones that are not fear-based. The undead rarely frighten, and for that reason, the Hoskub does not work on them. Understood. If an undead is frightened of something, it's because the spirit, in its life, 
before death had that particular aversion. Interesting. But as I said, that is based on the individual itself, and so no mask that I could create would work on an entire category of undead. That would be very unlikely. If you could learn who the Code Light Walker was in life, could that give you any advantage? It's possible, although perhaps you know this as a man of the divine. Different undead have different Bits of their mind are either left over or they're not. A ghost, a banshee, a revenant. These ones retain some of their thoughts, some of their memories from their life. Many undead have simply lost those memories. They wander as only partial husks, ethereal entities that do not retain what they once were. A cold light walker is lost. Understood. Right. Well, that's very informative. Thank you. Well, we will certainly stay away from the southwest of here. Best of luck. Thank you. Were you successful in your own pursuit? When we spoke last, you were a mere 10 or 15 minutes behind. It took us a while, but we... We caught up. Mm-hmm. Any motions to the offices behind a bounty of the broken crowns? No. A, a more personal vendetta, I suppose. Ah. Well then. So be it. So be it. Any sympathetic faces at the broken crown that I should speak to about? He pats the parchment again about. Uh, making sure the beast does not return to the South Road. Um. Well, Lieutenant Colonel Warbur seems like a reasonable man, although I don't know how easy it is to get an audience with him. Um, But there was a young man I spoke to. um, I don't believe he was on... uh, Did I see the guy? I need to find his name. But the guy who first told Erlen and I about the room of safe deposit. Uh, he was not in there when you were just in there. Yeah, he seems to be, he like, he was occupying Ken Reggie's position when Ken was not there, so he's, like, the backup supervisor there, yeah. So. Right. He was an uh, assistant supervisor. Yes, I have his name right here. Just give me one second. <laughs> Wait, I'm gonna go to my contents. Oh, there we go. Oh, my God. That's Look better. Look at this. Color-coded. Don't give, don't give me shit. Uh, is secret? Hold on. Uh, uh, Foster Bassett? Uh, oh, Foster Bassett? Uh, <laughs> wow. A, a, a young, sprightly boy named Foster Bassett. Uh, he dealt with mostly civilian inquiries, so I'm not sure if that Foster is... Foster Bassett. Yes. Uh, he seems to be working in the later shift of, of the day, oh. at least when I saw him. Um, but very eager to please and, and work hard. Yeah. If I can't find a willing ear now, I'll try and return later and see if I can find this Foster Bassett. Excellent. Yeah, thank you. Well, good good hunting, or, or not, I suppose. I still consider it a hunt. Well, good hunting, then. It employs the same set of skills. Right. Have a good day. Bye. And his ears kind of go back a little bit as he moves around you kind of gracefully to the side and steps... So you guys are kind of just on the southern end of the bridge here after you spoke to you know. What a wild guy. The undead might be haunting it. The reason I wanted to talk to Burmese, I want to know where there might be another the other one of Damasit's secret areas. Right, other than Nolan's Woods. What if the Chimera destroyed one of them? And that is why he wants it dead. Because that is what is making the meddling gods powerful. What's making the meddling gods powerful? I suppose it's only legend, but the fact that these two sacred areas, one hidden near Nolan's woods, Uh as long as they remain intact, 
meddling gods remain powerful. I see. What if the Chimera, whether on purpose or accident, destroyed one of them? And in doing so also disturbed... An, uh, is it a many undead? An army? What? I don't know. What, remind me how you know this specific information, if you can. Same way I was given every information about my targets. But it, it was vague, being like, you might see some undead creatures, or is it like... Just that they were drawn to it. Drawn to it? And perhaps he, perhaps he was vague on purpose, as to the reasons why. Because there's... Yeah, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, maybe he, maybe maybe the chimera destroyed. I've always wondered why, why he was so intent on the thing, and and, and yes, part of it now is that that it is his final. Yes. His final task for me, and that I would be insulting to him if I didn't carry it out. But there mm -hmm. might be more to it than that. Most likely, just yes. A th just a thought. Well, this is good news. Or at least... <laughs> it's news. Um, enlight uh, enlightening? It's information. Yes, lightning and blinding, yes. Of course, I of course, have the ability to yeah. create a large amount of light, but not, not over and over. Right. Enough to, to blind? No, not fully blind. I may have something. <laughs> Oh. Hold on. I'm absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me if this hurts. <laughs> <laughs> Look right here. How blinding is this on a scale of one to ten? One to blind. Oh, creatures. Uh, uh, oh. What? Yes, I, I, I could possibly have such a skill. Of blinding a creature. Yeah, I haven't ever used it. <laughs> I learned it because it sounded really Something cool. Something larger than a than a human. Uh, yeah, I, I believe so. It, it is unspecific when I remember reading it in my spell book. That would that could be that could be good. Yes. Is, is this blindness defense? Is that the spell? Color spray. Oh, color spray. Wait, do I have blindness defense? Oh my god, you dummy! <laughs> no, I definitely don't. There's no way. Oh my god, if I do, I'm gonna shit. Oh my god, I have it. <laughs> No, it's very on brand for Graven to not know what power he has. I know, he, he doesn't has. know his fucking spells. <laughs> now that you mention it. Didn't have to work for him. <clears throat> now that you mention it. I too. Possess his power. <laughs> I could. Yes. Oh, great. Yes. So, so, we have options. Mm. Yes, good, good, good information. Yeah? Great. <sighs> well, well. Excellent. Yes, um... <sighs> You seem troubled. Well, I would, th there's just one weird thing he said about the undead and fear. Um, that the undead have no fears. Yeah, but uh, a sp specific kinds of undead and and being a fear from their past life, not mm. not like a general fear. Mm. And well, when I was testing my abilities with Celis. Are you looking at me like that? <laughs> yes. I felt like there was fear. In, Your own fear? No, in my opponent. There was an opponent. And you instilled fear in it. I got this. I, I had the feeling. Also, just to be clear on oh, what yeah. on what Mirren said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not that undead don't have fears. It's mm. that like people, they're so individual that you oh. can't be like. It's not like oh, these kinds of creatures are afraid of fire. It's like right. it's because they're usually past yeah. humans, elves, whatever. Yeah. Like they might be afraid of something because they were afraid of it in life. Got it. But that you can't generalize and be like oh yeah, cold light walkers, they're afraid of this. Yeah. yeah. So he just brings all his bad. Nice. He's like oh no, yeah. oh, scared of that. Oh. <laughs> At first they're like. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> 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 Yes. Oh so it's that he can't prepare for it because you have to know specifically okay. what each undead sphere is. Okay. You are the fear. I got that sense. That sounds good. <laughs> I like that. It just it sounded odd. Mm. Anyway. I mean, have I? 
Have I seen you? No. And the others? Not really. Uh, nothing really changes about my appearance, uh, except for like a small cosmetic. Uh, it just the, the, the how I my skills are different. What cosmetic? I my eyes change. <laughs> it's no big deal. <laughs> they they glow. Are you embarrassed? That's a little embarrassing, yeah. That your eyes change color? Well, look, if I'm supposed to be hanging under the radar here a little bit, having a distinct, you know. Uh, so we can get you a pair of... Goggles. Eyeglasses or goggles. Yes. I mean, I could cast thaumaturgy every minute and change the color of my eyes, but that seems That's kind of yeah, excessive. Much. So yeah, maybe some well, shades. I uh, just ask because I'm curious about Oh, I mean, I guess you'll see it when we bust some skulls. <sighs> yes. All right. Thorsten's on the way to Ichabus. Ichabod. I- Ichabus. Ichabus. Not friggin' Slaviala. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so off to Thorsten. Yeah. Great. It's a good day. Yeah. Let's go. With a little bit of that information in mind, that Mirren having sort of imparted a little bit of mm. wisdom, both in uh, both in fear and botany, sort of to his areas of expertise, you start to make your way across the bridge, and you get to that main road that goes through <laughs> blindness, like, deafness, oh blindness, like deafness, sitting right there. It was right there. Right there. It was right there. And you move through Breakbeer, and you're once again, you're almost fooled into thinking that the Militia Reserve is experiencing a surge in tourism when in fact it's the Steeder Way that's a little further uh, north. That's continuing to draw the kind of traffic onlookers, many people kind of weighing their time versus cost and evaluating how often they want to utilize the town's newest form of public transportation. This time when you get there, so again, it's this little semicircle of a few stone buildings, a little run down. There's two men standing outside these buildings. One in the same faded green colors that you've seen on Thorsten and his fellow guards, but in nuts, it's in much better condition and with golden accents along the trim. And you remember back to when Thorsten specified that there are certain ca- there are captains of the militia reserve. So this guy seems to have a, a, a armor that denotes import in some way. So there's that man with the kind of faded green armor with the golden trim. And then there's a uh, dwarven man who has a tool belt around his kind of sizable waist and a sleeveless tunic that exposes a tangled mess of white hair along his arms. And the dwarf looks like he's writing in a small booklet as he scrutinizes the exteriors of the buildings. Oh, no. (laughs) You see him kind of push on the exterior, kind of feel the doorknob. The doorknob looks a little loose when he grabs it. You see him kind of... Shake his head. So they're going around to each of the dwellings, kind of examining them. And it looks like the captain is also sometimes maybe trying to downplay the condition <laughs> of like the poor condition that it's in. So hard to tell if it's like an inspection or some kind of deal that's happening, but you see the two of them as you start to approach. Before before we get out of Yeah, you're not them. quite there. Unless I'm mistaken. That looks like it might be one of the higher ups, Thorsten being one of the Meatheads. I don't know what you would call it. Like a soldier? Right. Got it. If that's one of the captains or whatever, Thorsten made a note of telling me that they were all bastards, really, and that they were stealing, what? and that was the reason that that this militia has kind of gone down the toilet, is that instead of spending the money where it needed to go, they were very oh. selfish, and they kind of kept the money in, to themselves. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, so... Just... Keep that in mind. So, don't, if, shoot them a nasty well, little look. Well, n- no, n- no, not, not yet. That. If, if something comes up, okay. just know that. Got it. Maybe don't give it away that Thorsten is talking shit. Okay, I will be neutral. Okay, good. <laughs> kind of. Yeah, as you approach, their backs are to you as you yeah. approach. They're kind of looking up at the buildings. Just kind of. uh, and there's not a because usually there's been a, like a guard. Yeah, there front, isn't one no, station there. Yeah, right. There it's isn't. It's okay. just the two of them out there. Um, all right. <clears throat> yeah, you can see that we need to redo the windows, but uh, you can do all that on your own time. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, what? 
Who's stationed here at the moment? I am. Captain Nethios, nice to meet you. Pleasure. Something I can do for you. Anyone else here? Yeah, I think uh, Thorsten's inside. Well, you seem busy. I'll just see myself in. Will you now? Is he expecting you? Honestly, yes. Yeah, fine, whatever. Yeah, let's go over and look at this one. Walks the dwarf away. Oh my goodness! God damn it. Give me a <laughs> sacred both, flame. <laughs> both of you, give me perception checks as they start to walk away. Yeah. Four. Eight. Eight. You only pick up one little piece as they're walking away. The dwarven man kind of turns to Captain Nethios, and you can hear him just as they're moving from one building to the next, sort of. I'm just telling you, he's not going to like it at this price. So it sounds like maybe a sale happened. Yeah. That's, the oh. yeah, but yeah. that's the only piece okay. that you pick up as he's walking. Well, he's going, we'll ask Thorsten about it, don't worry. <laughs> okay. Yep. So there's the three buildings, but you know which one that you went in before. <laughs> oh, this way, this way. So you push the door open. Once again, it has that very like, like hollow noise <laughs> like, as it opens because there's no furniture like inside. The place has been largely cleared out. But as you've seen him before, Thorsten is over by those tables on the back wall where the bodies were, armor piled in a corner, some of the objects that you've collected over time. And he's looking down at that same set of names that you saw him like scribbling at last time you were here. And he's like holding his hands on top of his head, like massaging the top of his skull, like he's trying to rack his brain as he continues to kind of look. I'll be out in just a little bit. Just give me a couple more moments, okay? Thorsten. Graven. Hello. Where the fuck have you been? I... Please. I've been waiting for you. I know. I thought you were coming back to me after we talked about the I names know. and the, the band of the benefactor. Please. Please. <sighs> Did Villapont speak to you? Yeah. He came by and told me not to... Told me not to mess around because it was dangerous or something. I'm here to give you the same warning again. To show you its import. Listen. We were right, alright? Luca Dune. I found him, but he found me. And I nearly died. I don't know whether he's still in the city. There's a very good chance that he's fled. But if you keep down this path, and he realizes it, he will kill you. If I had more time, if I had more support, I would stay and I would help you with this, but I cannot. So you're leaving then? <sighs> and you're asking me to just let my brothers and sisters of the, of the North just die to this... This monster. Thorsten. He's very powerful. He reaches down into his pocket, pulls out a little, tosses it over to you, <laughs> and you can feel it as you grab it. It's a little coin purse. That's 100 gold, as promised, for your help. Listen. If you, what's what's even going on here? Is this building going? What's happening with the captain out front? Will you are you even going to have a job here in the next in the coming weeks? I suppose it makes it all the more important that I finish this one, doesn't it? People are dying, Graven, and I was nearly one of them. With my not so insignificant powers. I nearly died. And maybe it was because I was stupid. And I know that it was because I went in alone. Well, I guess I'll just have to be smarter than you then. The contract is still up in the Broken Crown. I'll find someone else to help me. I won't be alone.
You know why he is on the run. What do you know? Yes. What do you mean? You know who's looking for him? Mr. Two? Yes, Senka's looking for him. Yes. The reason I'm not dead is he had me. He had me do something for him. He sort of bristles a little bit, almost like he's not sure if you have something on you, or if you, like, you can see him, like, looking at Orba, and then, like, at your bag. There was a crystal in the safe deposit room at the Broken Crown. Two of them, a yellow and a green. He bade me destroy the green. It held some power over him. I don't know what it was. You don't know either. But it has been destroyed, and I thought that Senka would find that to be a big deal. Evidently, she did not. You spoke to her. I tried. But... Well, no offense, but you're an outsider. Maybe she'd talk to me. Maybe she'd listen to what I have to say. She is not interested in more people knowing her business. The item in the room of safe deposit. I have an old friend who was uh, who was broken crown during the time when uh, Senka's wizards came to town a while back. His name's Smudge, Smudge McElroy. I could see if he knows what the crystals were used for. That would be telling. But, as I say, it is destroyed, so whatever hold over him supposedly is gone. But wouldn't it be important to know... Yes. What kind of hold that was? Yes. Well, I'll talk to Smudge, then. He seemed to also... Mr. Two. He seemed to also... say that he had... some larger plan. I don't know what that was. He's got some larger plan, and you want me to just drop this? What would you do if it was your home? Just... If it was your family? I'm telling you these things so that you can be careful. I obviously know that you're not going to give it up. I see that now. So I will try to give you as much information as I can. Finally, the place that he captured me was the old Broken Crown outpost. Remember, I went look there looking. Willoughby said not to go there. Yes, it is because he has an adolescent carrion crawler down there in the rancid toilets. Maybe I could... Maybe I could speak to the captains. I know that they're mostly useless, but I could get them maybe to do a sweep of the Broken Crown Station as a matter of public safety. Because they may be mostly useless, but they don't like looking bad. Because they don't want to risk their shitty, cushy jobs. And this would be a way of it not looking like it was you. This would be other people doing this, not you. Yes, if I could get them to... At least put together a small force to go in and remove the creatures. Well, I have reason to believe that he continues to visit there, because that's where he found me. I fell to the carrion crawler and was woken up by him. So, caution. Also, all the 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 addicts and people that stay there, the um, the poor people. Sure. They are loyal to him in so much as... Loyal to him? Well... He stole all the gold that I had on me at the time, and he used it to get the poor of this town to follow me. Hardly a form of loyalty, but I'll see what you mean. That is why I was not able to come to you right away. Because I knew that it would put you in danger, put myself and you in danger immediately. Make a persuasion check with advantage. The, the idea seems a little far-fetched. The, you know, you can tell that he sort of isn't sure whether you're saying that out of truth or out of hope to get him to stay away from the place. Okay. You can sense that kind of coming from him. Uh, persuasion. Yeah, with advantage. Okay. Let's go. Uh, uh, 16. 16. He sort of ten. mulls that over <laughs> in his head, and he kind of gives you a look and sort of searches for any sense of not bullshitting him, but 
you know, you came in trying to implore him to stop, and he's looking to see if you're just saying anything you can to get him to... But he doesn't sort of pick up on anything and gives you a, a nod, sort of a solemn nod. Okay. I think you might be right. I think more could die if he continues. It seems odd that there hasn't been another death since the last one, no? I think that he tied up a lot of loose ends on that ramp, on the rampage that he did go on. Okay. Okay, so the, so the captains for, for the, for the Broken right. Crown Station and, and Smudge. One other thing. And again, try to stay out of her way as well. Sure, get past that part. What? Sanka. I believe she's got what they call the, no, they call it the, uh, the Magosto itch or something like that. Do you know what I'm talking about? It's a... If somebody's had a skin graft. Surgical scar or something, yeah. yes. I have reason to believe that, God, this is getting deep. I have reason to believe. He looks around at his, like, <laughs> mad scribblings on the floor, like, arrows pointing, like, names the crossed at him. Yeah, room. I mean, yeah. he's like, he has gone deep, and he sort of mo- looks back at you. The amulet that is that changed hands a number of times. It was in Franco's possession. It was in one of the dead girl's possessions. Yes. Carlotta. Yes. It, ha- it might have something to do with Senka having had a graft. And you think... You think Senka is, is putting the amulet on to give herself some kind of benefit? I don't... May I? I? Uh, yeah, uh, Anthony doesn't, <laughs> Anthony sure. doesn't quite know whether mm-hmm. I made all the connections with um, um, Metallica Tumen mm-hmm. or not. Uh, oh, may, may I, Graven? Yes. <laughs> please, please. So... We've been learning of a, a craft called metallic attunement. Are you familiar? Heard grumblings of it, Butez. Yes. Uh, well, he employs it, and and um, what we are supposing is that on this particular skin graft, there was a tattoo, a a small one, hardly traceable, but it it had the metal for metallic attunement imbued into it. So when um, Senka had this skin graft done, if somebody were to don that particular necklace onto her, and therefore onto the skin graft, then the necklace would take hold. So it's not Senka she doing might, it on purpose. No, Correct. she might not know. I found another piece of evidence when I was down in the shitter. Something about finagling documentation at Magostos. So maybe so somebody, somebody forced her to get the skin graft. Uh, uh, or maybe she was, her Yes, it, maybe she was there for a different reason, and it was this particular one in this particular place with this particular tattoo was given unbeknownst to her. Possibly. So, and like, even though no one's in this giant <laughs> open room, he kind of leans in a little bit conspiratorially. So she could be under the effect of something right now. She, she could be. It's possible, which is only to show you how well thought out this plan is by Mr. Two and how cautious and how um, how far he's willing to go and how resourceful he is. And yet look how far we've come. I agree. You're doing an amazing job. I'm so impressed. But what I mean to say is, oh. as you said, tying up loose ends. If he thought for a moment that either of you knew this information, he would have made an attempt on your life, no? He did. Maybe for once, you're ahead of him on this. Maybe. But, with that money that he paid all those people, he does have eyes all over the city. And so, all it takes is you going to the same place more than once to pique his interest in you. I'd have to imagine, if he's as well as connected as you say, that he certainly knows that I'm looking into the murders. It seems sure. unlikely that he doesn't. Yes. Correct. So it's just a matter of not making him feel like I'm close enough to be worth, you know. Yeah. Ju- you say just a matter of, but... 
well, create some false leads for yourself. Um, we've recently had to do some public acting stupid as well, like uh, sh maybe displaying that you're on the wrong trail or something, just to keep yourself safe, right? Yes, decoys. Right. Yeah. I think I can do that. And maybe I'll just find a reason that isn't directly related to the investigation to find my way over to reciprocity, see if I can't discern something. Maybe, yes. Careful around there. He could be there, for all we know. Let's hope not. I would imagine this wizard is quite powerful with illusions, so don't trust your eyes sometimes. All right. I apologize if I add more time. Are you coming back? Eventually, but yeah. it might be weeks. Well, the killings happened over the course of a couple of weeks. Maybe I'll have some fresh bodies to show you. <laughs> and he sort of laughs in a kind of attempt at dark humor. <laughs> Hopefully not mine. Try to not have it be yours, yes. Sorry, I snapped at you. No, I understand. You... It is, as I said in the very beginning, a worthy endeavor, but a, worthy endeavor. a very dangerous one. Yes. Well, the good news is that up until recently, and perhaps including now, most people haven't taken me seriously, so maybe keep, Mr. Two feels the same. Yeah, keep it up. To your benefit, yes. Now, what what is going on with this building? What is going on with that ludicrous captain. You might have noticed that the militia reserve is a little under-furnished. I think the captains are hoping to sell this place, like the Broken Crown did to theirs, and relocate to a smaller venue. The idea being that Cliff Ironcloud and some of the other city officials, they give a stipend to the captains, and like I said, they pocket most of that money. Smaller place means they pocket a bigger percentage of the money. So if we work out of a mere shack, they get a bigger cut. So I think they're attempting to sell this piece of property, which now that the Steederway is here, is in a prime location. Yes. To whom? Do you know who they're speaking with right now? I'm not sure who he is, no. I don't know who he represents. And who did... You're saying the Broken Crown Outpost was sold before they moved to this new one? Yes. I mean, it used to be bigger. Yes. The, right. the, who did they sell it to? Why is it abandoned? It hasn't... It, I think it was bought up by the advocates. They just haven't turned it into anything yet. Oh. Advocates, all right. Sometimes they buy up pieces of land that people are trying to sell and then sell it at a lower price to people who need the space right. in an attempt to make sure that all of the... Keep it in the north? Yes, that all of the true northerners have a place to live or, or a place of business. Right. There's no paper trail for these captains? Like, they don't have to show receipts or anything? Well, as far as anybody knows, they're doing their job. Have you tried to reach out to Cliff, or...? In regards to what? Well, where does the money come from? It's mostly from the advocates. They collect it from people who... The small number of people, some of the businesses that believe that the Militia Reserve does some good, some security work, some... Well, that, I guess that's what I'm saying. Have you tried to tell the advocates that money's getting pocketed. Well, they do their best to try and every once in a while do some small thing. Uh, put out a fire at someone's home. Uh, rescue a pet. Little things to make it look like mm. they're doing something important. That's why I tried to leverage this. Remember I told you that they didn't even want to put this contract at the Broken Crown, the one for these murders, but I, I told them that I would go to the advocates and tell them that they weren't doing anything with the money, which is how they gave me the money to put it up. Right. I can only dip into that well so many times before they simply fire me. Well, if there's any way that we can... You don't have any evidence of any kind, do you? Of what? Of the pocketing. Of their malfeasance? No. Yeah. Well. As I said, they don't do nothing. Right. They just do as close to nothing as possible while still looking like they do something. Well, maybe when we come back, you'll have solved the murder and you'll be put in charge. 
Yeah. Something like that. All right. If I think of anything else, I'll try to send word. Okay. Thank you. Be Thank you. Be careful. Of I will. Thorsten, by the way. Orva, it's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Safe travels, wherever you're going. We'll tr- check back in on you. He t- scrambles to his feet a little yeah. sort of up off the floor <laughs> okay. for a moment, yeah. and... Gives him a little bow. Farewell. He sits back down, goes to scribbling a little bit. <laughs> Step back outside yeah. of that little courtyard. You can see they're now at the last <laughs> building in that row. Again, same kind of examination of the, the doors part of the way open, and the, the dwarf looks like he's looking in at the interior, just kind of inspecting its general condition. That's Thorsten. He seems nice. <sighs> he seems... Narrow-minded a bit to his, to a fault. Well, you gave him all the information, yeah, and tried. he hasn't gotten killed yet, so he's doing okay. You For almost now. died before he almost died. Is I, all I'm saying. I I said that. I know. No, I know. I'm just <sighs> seems nice. I hope that I don't get him killed with that information. Is I guess what I'm saying. I think information is power. Depends on how you use it. Well, but yes, yes, but he seems quite, quite savvy. Let's hope that we don't find him dead when we come back to the city. Don't say this. Why do you say this? I'm, so, it was, I'm saying hope. I hope. <laughs> I have hope. <laughs> okay. Okay. We, we won't. Ichabus. Ichabus. Off the Ichabus. 400 gold per lodestar. Ichabus. <laughs> yeah. What did I say? <laughs> I don't know. The little inflections are a little... <laughs> just Ichabus. 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 <laughs> Off we go. Off we go. Okay. So north of the militia reserves you oh. go, past the Steederway. Closing some doors. And you butt up against the trees and the farmland that begin to kind of make up the fertile fields of the Navika estuary there. And you see a bungalow with a wide kind of domed roof that looks almost like a great shield sits upon this sectioned off plot of land. Mm. So it has that kind of just domed and it overhangs the edges of the building. So a little like hut almost, but the room is a, uh, the roof is a sort of thatched and uh, wood sort of inlaid with the beams. So it's beams with uh, thatched between them. And as if a sculptor was kind of crudely advertising his wares, The full extent of the front lawn is covered in a myriad of stone statues, mostly sea creatures, but also a few very regal-looking humanoids holding great weapons like a trident and a two-handed hammer far too large to be practical in combat. So they're not, most of them aren't even fully done, like some of the humanoids from the waist up are like carved out, and then the bottom half's just like a block of stone, so he's gone from kind of sculpture to sculpture, working on each one individually. You don't have to get inside to see the man that you think that you're looking for. An elderly human man with a tricorn hat and a large gold hoop earring in one of his in his left ear that swings back and forth. He's rocking back and forth a little kind of aggressively in a rocking chair <laughs> on his oh front porch, kind of with a scowl on his face. And he's also digging into a bag of what looks like feed and scattering it to some <laughs> nearby chickens. And so there's a bunch of chickens kind of clucking around near him, I mean, making some noise. So each time he kind of pushes forward, throws another little handful of feed out, and the clucking is loud enough that he doesn't hear your approach as your footsteps are kind of moving along the grass of his lawn. So you get a little closer, and you see him sort of... Filthy birds. Chickens. Yeah, gross. Never. You you fight beasts, and you're disgusted by some chickens. They ugh, they're just a dirty, stinky birds. Okay. Let's go talk to them. Okay. So you get a little closer. 
And as you guys sort of see this sort of dour, aged face, little wrinkles of time worn in, that is where we're going to take a oh break before we meet Mr. Ichabus, Ichabus. Altamari. Ichabus. Yeah, I mean, you were saying fine. <laughs> Every time you guys said it, it was like a little bit different. Ichabus, 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 Zumba Kazi. So as Orban and Graven continue to sort of... Oh my gosh. Take care of some business across Wamparani Na. Checked off a couple things. Broken crown, check. Yeah. Yeah. Uncomfortable bang, bang. conversation with uh, Thorsten, check. Uncomfortable conversation with Ken Renji. Yep, Ken Renji, check. But that is where we're going to take a little break. And we'll come back. Did I really think I was going to get in there and be like, don't? And he was going to be like, okay. <laughs> what did I think oh, was going to happen? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. Thorsten, cut it out. Okay. <laughs> I've been working on this for like, a month before you got yeah. here, but yeah, let me just... Uh... <laughs> you should. You should. <laughs> let me just pack this up. Dumb. Uh, um, right. I will, because I haven't been able to read the chat, I'm so sorry, I'm gonna go ahead and look through subs and bits and stuff, and I'll announce thank yous uh, at the end of the break. Fair to say mahi mahi and maybe some somber uh, thanking to be done. <laughs> oh, hey, amazing. Yes, I'll, I'll yes it's, it it's all Urban Graven all the time this episode, so oh she's had to... Be away from the chat. Um, but we hope you guys are enjoying. As always, we'll yeah. be back after a quick little break and we'll dive back in and we will um, continue the adventures of Craven and Norman. Yeah, there, look at him, just like that. <laughs> yeah, and it's a little, it's probably easier to see on the but she's got a little skull. Oh, she does. She yeah, does it's, it's hard to see on the part. It's skull. Think about that. <laughs> uh, once again, just the reminder Too Long Didn't Watch from last week is in the middle of the. Uh, of the break video mm -hmm. as well as a little map of where we've been along our journey so far. Correct the mundo. All right, everybody. Bye. We'll be right back. Bye. See you on the other side. Stay, stay there. Stay where? Here. Welcome back, everybody, to chapter 99 of Peek Beneath the Veil, our second to last, our penultimate chapter wow. of season one. My we're going to be diving Lord. back in with a little more of uh, Graven and Orba working their way through Wamparani Na. But before we dive back in... <clears throat> yes, I had a chance. Thank you all very much. Here we go. Johnny Gadfly gifted five subs. Mahi Mahi also gifted five subs. Rainmocker had, uh, gifted a sub. And Captain Fiddleloaf subbed. I love these names. <laughs> Night Munch also resubbed. And Somber777 gifted a sub. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All thank of you. you. Um, thank you so much for your generosity. We will continue to tell the stories, which we'll do right now as you guys approach... Oh the sort of front porch here of Ichabus's little abode. Oh, yeah. The chickens kind of clucking loudly. They're just little sharp pickets of noise the biting at your ears. And again, he's sort of looking off to the side as he scatters the feed. And you guys begin to walk forward, getting closer and closer. <clears throat> good day, sir. Ah. Uh, good day, sir. I suppose it is. Um, can 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 we approach you? I'm just gonna get a little closer. Sure. How close do you get? <laughs> well, like, you sit in his lap. <laughs> yeah. Like six feet. Sure, he doesn't stop you from getting okay. kind of. I mean, six feet. You're still not like on the porch. You're like a couple steps off. Right. Yeah. Sure, yeah. That seems good. Um, we come from the Broken Crown Station. We were told that you might be interested in um enlisting us for a service that we would like more information on. You were told who is interested. That that you were. Who is you? Are you not Ichabus? Ah, uh, he is me. Oh, well, Ichabus, I am Orba, and this is my companion, Graven. That is Yaku Uma, Altamari, young ones. Show some respect for the rank, for it was my lineage that protected Antisuya's borders long before Pachacama sunk his filthy hands into its soil. My apologies. Would you mind saying that one more time for me? Yaku Uma. Yaku Uma. That Altamari. Your, that is your title. Yes. Well, Yaku Uma Alt Altamara, I apologize. Let's get off on the correct foot. Bye. Bye. Sir. And you've come for what? There was a Broken Crown contract in your name, I, I assume. Uh, yes, yes. The Lodestones. Yes, you're quicker than a griffin in a gale wind. I put that contract in just this morning. We are uh, eager. Yes. That's awfully eager to please the Broken Crown. Mm. Are you lone wolves? Oh! <laughs> I 
wouldn't say that we do things for the pleasure of the blo- broken clan. Not just good dogs of theirs? No. <laughs> no. Certainly not. Uh, what brings you here so quickly, then? Because we are setting out from the city. Soon. Yes, north. And this sounded like something that we could do on our travels. Uh, even I, who does not care much for the affairs of this town, can see you are outsiders, and I do prefer those who grow roots to those who lick boots. But I know that my request is one... Uh, of an ambulatory designation. Do you travel much? Yes. Only. Quick, what's the most dangerous place you've ever been to? Recently? Shocky Mountains for me. Seems a little impressed by that, actually. Sort of looking at your appearance and then hearing it a little. Yeah, I know. And you? I would say the same. Oh, copying, are we? Graven, say something cool. Yes, Graven, say something cool. I've spent time in many a mountain range and battled many formidable beasts, Mm. undead and otherwise. I sailed through a hurricane once off the coast of Kirikachun. Ship capsized and I had to ride a giant seahorse back to shore. Whoa. Seems... Seems what? Significant. Hmm. Well, that's the kind of guts that I'm looking for. Do you have those kinds of guts? Yes, sir. Plenty of guts. So, you've heard about the lodestones, and you want to help old Yaku Uma Altamari. Well, it won't be easy, but I suppose it will fill your pockets if you manage to avoid turning yourself into a corpse. Well, if it also helps fellow travelers navigate the lands, we can see value in that. Is that what you're doing it for? No. Suppose I'll keep my money that. No. Mm, yes. And Isuyu's first explorers discovered these lodestones scattered across the continent. Each one has a unique magnetic property that draws different metals with different strengths, meaning that you can use specialized compasses to guide yourself to them. More useful than a traditional compass in certain situations. But you might say, why, Mr. Yahu Uma Altamari, why would you need such a lodestone in these civilized times? Well, I'll tell you why. Because the cobalt winds are coming. <laughs> he, like, makes wind <laughs> noises with his mouth. Give me a history check. Oh my god. I'm not good <laughs> at Who are we talking to? Any of any kind? Truly nine. Nine. You've heard some old stories of what do you mean? The cobalt winds. It's a supposedly naturally occurring phenomenon where these kind of subterranean earthquakes release cobalt dust into the air, like metallic cobalt oh. dust. And when this happens during Antisuyu's storm seasons, Antisuyu has a couple sort of periods where there's heavy storms, and the heavy winds kind of whip up these cobalt dusts, and because of their sort of ferrous kind of magnetic properties, the cobalt dust, it messes with traditional Mm. compasses. So, like, people who are out at sea, it particularly is a hazard to people traveling out at sea because they they can't rely on a a compass to, to, you know, guide them. So it's these cobalt winds. And these cobalt winds, they happen irregularly and infrequently. The last sort of reported occurrence was hundreds of years ago. Some people think that maybe they're not real, like a legend, or that if they are real, they're not naturally occurring, that it was someone doing this. Like, there's definitely different reports as to the legitimacy that this is like a thing that happens every X number of years here. And I would know that. I would... That you would know what specifically. That both, that some people believe, don't believe it, and that the last one was so Yes, long I mean, ago since that, you've been alive, it's yeah. never happened, and you've heard people mention it, and, you know, some people think that maybe it was a one-time thing, that it was yeah. like someone did that, and yeah, so it, it's up for debate as to whether that's a, a regular natural phenomenon. You believe the cobalt winds are coming? Oh, yes, I do. What makes you believe that? 
the chickens, of course. Oh. Look at them. He points over them. They barely eat. Their stool runs wet as wine. The metals in the air affect the smaller creatures first. I carry my chickens regularly to the Wakchu Barrens up north, where the fissures give us a glimpse into the earth. That is a place where the cobalt dust comes up first. So I take the chickens there, and when the chickens are getting sick, wh- you know the winds are coming. That is very Would I know where that place is that he's talking the about? Yeah. yeah, it's kind of just to the northeast up the coast from, okay. from where you guys are. It's a fairly large area. Is it south of, like, Finlock Forest? Yeah, it's between Naveen Forest and Finlock Forest. Okay. You've been up there recently in the your chickens were affected. Yes, they still are now. Used to be able to pick up their feces, but now, smeared across the ground, diuretic my chickens are. Yes. Common for metal poisoning in the air. Well, if well. we are traveling up north, should we be concerned for our own well-being? Well, the winds kick up. We're going to need our lodestones back, or there will be trouble. Our brothers and sisters at sea will be lost. And when the worst of the storm season is upon us, a blackened sky will blanket the land in shadow, making those without magic as vulnerable as a rat in a tabaxi hovel. Do... is... I'm not a sailor. Do, is this a common practice for all sailors, or...? Why is what a common practice? Uh, carrying these specialized compasses. No. It's practice for me. Got it. For the Yaku Walkanka. Right. We act as guides when others fail to do so. Understood. Yes. I well, know I am right. I know it. And he kind of goes into <laughs> kind of an insular kind of like, you can tell, maybe you get the impression that other people have told him otherwise, that there's like, that's not happening, that's bullshit. He sort of squeezes his hands together a little bit. I know it. Sorry. Sorry. Lodestones. What do they need? What do they need to be repurposed? Yes, well, people don't want to believe what they haven't seen with their own eyes. It's up to he who is me. But I do not move as swiftly as I once did. I tried to get some help with the lodestones out of a sense of duty. But some people don't know the meaning of the word anymore. So I must resort to bribery instead. Which is why I went to the broken crown. Activating the lodestones is as simple as a Southlander. You just whack it at the base a few times with a large metal hammer, and it realigns itself. Now don't hit it so hard that the whole thing crumbles, of course. How will we know when it is done? Well, I'll know when my compasses begin to work again. So we are meant to find stones, whack them but not until they break, and hope that they are reactivated. We have no... You can't give us one of these examples to test it. Yes, I suppose I could give you one. It'll be hard to tell if you did it correctly while you're there at the lodestone. I'll provide you with one of my compasses, but even in their dormant state, the lodestones will pull at the needle when you're very close by. So you won't know for sure until you're a couple of hours away and the needle holds true. You understand? Yes. Yes. And I want my compasses back. If you lose or break them, I'm taking it out of your 400. Fine. That seems fair. Yes. Now, could I use, you know, take my mace, like, could I use this instead of a hammer? No. Of course not. He (laughs) sort of gets up out of the rocking chair, and he goes over to a little kind of chest without a lock that's on the porch there, and he kind of flumps it open and reaches in, and... For a man, his sort of stature and size, you're impressed at his ability to reach down, and he picks up this entirely made of metal maul. It's like a handle and a sort of curved part on the top that's like almost a U shape, not quite, sort of an arch shape, that he lifts up. You'll need one of these. Whoa. Why? Fully metal. That way you get the full effect. Uh, It sounds like he is... Quite knowledgeable. I wouldn't question his advice. All right. This sounds very particular. Is there any other technique or advice that you could give? 
Okay. Make an insight check also. Oh boy. Mm. Good lord. Really good, though. Is it? 13. Oh, okay. 13? That's what the rolled a natural 8. Just relax. <laughs> you relax. <laughs> As he hands it over to you, you kind of look up and down this item. There doesn't seem to be anything special about it. <laughs> it's just a big, heavy thing. Yeah, I mean, it's shaped in kind of a cool, yeah. unique design, but he seems to be excited about this special hammer that he has. As long, it is fully metal, so okay. he does. Uh, he did imply that you couldn't whack it with a wooden club or something. Okay. But if you had another metal bludgeoning I mean, object, is my mace not all metal? Uh, your new mace? Yeah, I think the head of it is like an obsidian. Isn't it like a stone? I can't remember. Mm. Oh, I don't remember. I don't. Okay. I don't think it's metal. All um, right, but yeah. I suppose you want this back as well. Uh, yes, of course. <sighs> I'll make room for it. And that's a large size item I know, for the purposes of I travel. Know. I knew it. I knew that was going to take up three lots slots, of man. Room. I have lots of room. Um, if you take your shit back. Um, sorry. I'm sorry. That was mean. <laughs> this is something I could practice on to, so you could let me know if I'm doing it right. Just hit the thing and don't break it. Maybe. As hard as I can. Yes. How big are these stones? Ah. He goes back over to that little chest, and he reaches and he takes out a couple of pieces of parchment. I made drawings of the lodestones. I would love to see them. Ooh. Here's one. And it kind of just looks like a rock. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And is this to scale? No. Okay. Uh, six feet tall or so. Uh. Six feet tall. Yes. Understood. That's just one of them. Now, here's the part where you tell me where you're traveling, and I tell you if you're wandering in the vicinity of any of my lodestones. Are we destined to dance together? Uh, yeah. You say your lodestones. Yes. It was your people that created them or discovered uh, them. The Akuwal Kanka are the ones that utilized them the most, yes. All right. Well... Yes, um, well, first, north. We're headed north. to... North where? Where north? North is big. Yes, well, the, um... First, we're heading to the mountains, the mountains. just north. Yes. Which uh, mountains? Yes, I'm looking north. it up right now. Uh, the Rapra Mountains, yes. sir. The uh, Rapra, you say. Okay, and then you said somewhere after that. Well, perhaps in the direction of Finlock Forest. Mm. And will you come back to Navikapura along the coast, or back through the hills? Um, that we are actually not entirely sure not of. Not sure, but... So I... both would be good to know ahead of time. I have two lodestones that might be within striking distance. Let's hear them. One is in the Ebb Woods. E-B-B Woods. Ebb Woods. The Ebwood Ruins, just south of the Rapper Mountains, east of the Split River. There's a crater there where the ground collapsed and swallowed a town whole centuries ago. As far as I know, the lodestone that was located in this town did not suffer a similar fate. The picture that I drew, that is the Ebwood's lodestone. Now, the other is hardly on your way up, but depending on your route back, you may meander by. It's atop one of the two tall crags in the Wakchu Barrens. If you're traveling along the coastal road between Vern and Vikapura, you'll pass between what's called the mast and the mainsail. There are two crags in the Wakchu Barrens, the largest ones can't miss them. But you'd best get your climbing boots on, because the mainsail is the eastern rock, right up against the ocean, and atop it is the lodestone. You gotta get up on top of it, and then swing this giant thing at it. It's not a mountain. I drew a picture of that one as well. He goes back to his box. Ah! Oh my God. It looks a lot like the first... <laughs> I'm Looks just... a lot like the fr they're completely different. Oh, you, yes, now that you hold it like that, I see it. I see it. Make a persuasion check. Oh my god. Fuck. Oh 
Come on, man. Oh, that is a 20, I think. A dirty 20. Dirty 20. He looks into your sort of large, <laughs> innocent <laughs> eyes. Yes, it is. Yeah. So we got to hold it. Like, so that like it. is the mainsail lodestone. Would I know the names that he's been using? Would I know them as the natural names that everybody uses, or maybe are some of these things different names? You know. Yeah, he's um, he's given you mostly the the names in common that that would be a large understanding. Like some okay. of these things, like even just as an example, Trickster's Thicket has an elven name that the elves use. Like th- these okay. are mostly the the common names okay. of these of these places. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I can give you one or both of these compasses, depending on how adventurous you're feeling. But as I said, don't lose the damn things. It wasn't me that made them, and I don't know how to make more. We won't. I feel comfortable at least not taking the one on top of the crag. That's a quite a specific location. And Fine. Give it to someone else. Well, I think we could... Or I think it's best to... We can? Take both. Okay. I, d- I didn't want to yeah. risk um, well, unnecessary. Now I don't want to give it to you. If you're not going to go there. No, we are going to. I'm just saying I don't want to risk your stones unnecessarily when we know... God damn it, man. I'm s- risk the compasses? Oh my god. It's too late. I'll give it to somebody else. Okay. How about the other one, please? Yes. The uh, Edwards Lodestone. Yes. That would be helpful. All right. Fine. I gave you the hammer. Mm. Here's the compass. Oh, I, back I, I now on. literally see what you're saying is that it is a risk because we don't need the compass. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm fucking saying. Yeah. You don't need one? I understand why she said that now. I thought it was because she didn't think we would go there, but now I see that it's such a specific spot that we probably wouldn't need the compass. We wouldn't miss it. I got it, I got it. I'm, I'm an idiot, I know. He gives He's you idiot, his... Yes. Ichabus's metal <laughs> mall. Oh my which god. You in your nice. Position. And then also the Ed <gasps> Woods Lodestone Compass. This is a two handed weapon that does 2d6 blood. I mean, yeah, it's a mall. <laughs> it's basically just a mall. Cool. So, also the, so you notice that it says in the description, and as he described it to you as well, so it mostly, like you can see it as you're holding it in your hand, the needle kind of just sways indiscriminately around mm. in a circle kind of. As you get close, like within just a few miles, mm. it will start to work because you're close enough to the lodestone. Mm-hmm. And then once you've activated it, it will work for any distance, theoretically. That's what he says. Right. So, yeah. Okay. Well, we will do our best. All right. Good. As when the cobalt winds come, we will need them. When uh, if your chickens start dropping dead, will that be another sign? Uh, the, the metals in the air usually aren't lethal. It just makes them sick. But as larger and larger animals start to get sick, then you'll know. Diarrhea? Yes. Specifically? Uh, lessened appetite as well. Headaches, if you can get an animal to tell you it has a headache. Just as a precaution, uh, this stone does not attract any kind of creatures, does it? Should we anticipate that? stone itself does not. Although, if you know anything about the Edwards, there's ghosts. (laughs) Ah, good to know. The spirits of those who died when the ground collapsed are said to wander. Right. I won't pretend it's not dangerous. As for the lodestone atop the mainsail, well, I wouldn't say it's the creatures you have to worry about so much as the sheerness of the climb. Right. Of course. Did you know? So, oh. I was going to ask if you had had any other interest in this, but you said you only posted it this morning, so... Yes. I anticipate much interest. Oh, good. Yes, good. Well, we will have to be swift about it, I suppose. Of course. You will be doing a great honor helping the Yaku Wakanka. A rare opportunity to uh, make yourselves known... Your brethren, uh, 
I imagine there's not very many of them in this city, but are they more prevalent in other cities? There are very few. Most of them have relocated to other continents. Many of them fled when Emperor Pachacama took over the continent. The continents? Any one more specifically than any others? Some of us went to the Ka'ira Highlands, oh. scattered in communities throughout there. Hmm. More out of the reach of governments. And he almost says that word with like, he spits on it a little yeah. governments. <laughs> gives it a little nasty turn. Is that why they didn't return when the Emperor fell? Well, I imagine that they found some uh, bit of their own land there in the highlands away from the prying eyes but I found that Nuvikapura, unlike some of our Southland bootlickers has managed to stay the course remain independent so for now I stay although don't think I haven't been tempted hmm. would never well do you feel you have adequate information I think so. All right. Be gone, then. Lovely To work, the Ab Woods. By the way. It's great stuff. Yes. I like this one. She'll point to, a, I don't know, like a dolphin. You can't dolphin. have it. I, I would never presume to. Good. We'll take good care of this and the compass. Thank you. Mm. And beware the cobalt winds. Yes, thank you. They're coming. Yes. I know they're coming. I know it. Or was already turning around. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. You hear him in the back, yeah. like, while you're walking away. I know it. I know it. Huh. Odd. No. Plenty of gold to be made, I suppose. Yeah. So we could potentially make, like, 800, right? Because yes. it's 400 per. Yes. That's great. It is. Wait. Oh. Yeah, that could be. That could be the rest of Band of the Benefactor. 240? Oh. Uh, uh just shy, yes. Just wow. shy of. Mm. One more contract and then we'd be set. Right. It's... Maybe we should make it a point of getting that second one. We should, yeah. Going up straight to the Rapper Mountains and then coming back down by the coast. If it works. Right. All right. Well, he was crazy, was... but it was very good. Yes, I... I suppose whether or not he is a raving lunatic, it still it was a, would be beneficial to uh, all, if not just us, that these lodestones are active. I agree. Maybe we could eventually buy one of the compasses or just find out how to get our own. Sure. Yeah. All right. Well. Okay. Right. Where were we? I don't know. Um, We've gotten everything of the coast, right? I think so. We didn't need to go to, like, Deck or Palomar. We just did that. Um, <sighs> Sephira spoke with Mohan, right? Yeah, Sephira spoke. That's, yeah, that's the whole thing. Yeah. That's the ship thing. I do still wonder about those dock workers that we saw outside the Steedaway. Oh, that definitely Palomar got a shiner because... You think that that was, you think that was them? Well, I don't think they gave it to him, but I think they were working together. Right. That's what they said. right. Hmm. Are you guys walking and talking? I don't know. If yeah. You're <laughs> heading back in the sort of south toward the main portion. The, yeah. yeah. Okay. I think we should. Yeah, we should just be on our way. I guess this is it for one for Anina. Yeah, say goodbye to the coast. It was nice. Well, <sighs> it was not so nice. It was pretty. Yeah, it got pretty shitty. I don't like cities, I don't like them. <sighs> they have their uses. Work your way back to the busy streets of Wambaran and Ah. The men and women moving with great purpose, chores to be done, deliveries to be made, goods to be sold. And like horses with blinders, they seldom stop or sidetrack certain hours of the day, facilitating a kind of burst of productivity that can then later enjoy the fruits of their labors at a comforting, familiar spot, such as All Hands on Deck, which seems to be a place that everybody goes around here. You notice that eye contact is very rarely made. People focused, moving through the streets quickly, only sort of stopping to talk if they're facilitating a transaction of some kind. 
And unless you've kind of inadvertently gotten in someone's way, in which case it usually kind of comes with a scowl, people don't really regard you for the most part. But as you're moving through, you see a man leaning up against a nearby lamppost. It's Shakar. He's back in the <laughs> It's your fucking Shakar. I'm so scarred. He's like, you fucking fell for it. <laughs> gotcha. He's a prank. He's got a toothpick in his mouth, and he's following Orbo with his gaze. No effort made to hide it. And he's sit- standing in an easy spot. He's not kind of obscuring himself by the, by the side of the road or anything among this kind of sea of people minding their own business. He has finely crafted but unmarked leather armor inlaid with metal strips for reinforcement. Looks expensive. And he has a bushy white goatee, short cropped hair that make his kind of large forehead seem even larger than it is. And if memory serves, he may have been one of the guards at the rest stop between Naupa and Nakuzi back when you were traveling with Bizarra and met Percival Mullifer playing Drop the Crown. He looks like he may have been one of Percival's personal guard escorts. Got it. He's kind of waiting. Oh, that's not good. That's Mm -hmm. not good at all. And he sees you moving, and not in a threatening, quick way. As soon as you're kind of getting close, he gets himself up from leaning off the lamppost, takes the toothpick out of the mouth, and kind of flicks it to the side. And he walks up to you guys. He's ca- he's coming like yep, straight. Coming at straight. Us. I mean, there's a second here to say something before he gets to you, but yeah. he's coming straight towards you. Okay. He's not making. He's not sneaking up. He's just confidently walking towards you guys. Okay. I'll quickly say, this may have something to do with Bizarre. Fuck. I'll kind of draw myself up. Sure. <clears throat> I'm cut. <clears throat> <laughs> Try that again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Captain Clearspire. I represent Mr. Percival Mullifer. Could we uh, speak out of the thoroughfare? By all means, lead the way. All right, just to the shot here. Yeah. Motions. You guys just step out of, just so people aren't kind of passing in yeah. between you as you're moving. Mm-hmm. I don't think I know who you are. All right. This is my companion, Graven. Fine. I'm going to hazard a guess that. You're aware that Mr. Mollifer entered into an arrangement with a halfling named Bizarra in Correct. the pursuit of the Light Whistle Estate Club chess pieces. Yes. Yeah, at Briscoe's Eatery out west, you were seen arriving and leaving with said tiefling. Do you deny it? No. Good. Well, you'll have to excuse my language, but I've been running all over this city looking for her. So where the fuck is she? You won't find her here, unfortunately. Yeah, she never picked up her instructions from the mail house, which is a funny way of proving yourself to be a reliable employee of the Mullifers. He may not see it, but Bazaar was doing him a kindness. She had quite the target on her back, and she needed to be out of the city for a while. Rima, fuck us all. Do you know how stupid that was? To elbow her way into a contract and then hang Percival out to dry. She's going to be dodging Mollifair Aya all across the country till she dies. Well, how can we make that not happen? Percival's growing impatient. Like I said, we left instructions that were never picked up. And he knows you were with her, which doesn't bode well for you. If I can't find Miss Aura, which it seems like I may not, I meant to offer you a way of keeping the shearing eye of the Mollifers from burning a hole in your chest. If you like navigating Navikapura unencumbered by harassment, you might give it a strong consideration. What is your offer? Does he speak at all? He does when it's necessary. One of Percival's stated interests is in finding the Steedaway saboteur, yeah? Yes. He strongly believes it was no accident, further supported by Mr. Bowley's confession shortly before he was fired. A little digging of our own has turned up a name. Mogril Busk. Mogril, M-O-G-R-A-L, Busk, B-U-S-K. He's an artisan, mostly works with metal. And he was commissioned to build the valves on the malice tanks in the tunnels below the Melvin Hogs Memorial Building. Now, nobody thought much of it, but now that the valves have already malfunctioned, 
they're starting to corrode unusually fast. Strange, considering the Steederway's barely been of use. Only a couple of days. That combined with their initial malfunction has raised a few eyebrows. Now, obviously, if he's done something nefarious, he'll clam up at the sight of Molofair guards on his premises. Not to mention if things need to get physical. It would look bad to the Northerners if it was us who did it. Molofairs have only just arrived in town. This is exactly the kind of thing that he was hoping Bizarra would step in for. You follow me? Yes. Percival would like to see if you can get him to admit that he made a faulty valve. Or maybe get him to point the finger at somebody else. You don't have to use violence if you're not up for it, or you're not crafty enough to get around it. And to be clear, I'm not asking you to follow this investigation through to completion. I just need a little bit of legwork to keep Percival off your back until he finds someone else to take Bizarre's post. Yeah? Sure. But don't ester- underestimate how difficult an ornery mull affair can make your life. It's not a threat, it's just a fact. We take that as, as it is. And so can I tell him you'll speak to him? What will be our payment? You don't get no payment. Your payment is the mull affairs are off your ass. That's hardly a job. It sounds more like blackmail to me. Call it what you like. If you wanted to follow the investigation all the way through and find the saboteur, well, maybe you'd be entitled to something that was always promised. Sure of that? You get what I said. Is that an option for us, if we decide it? I'll run it by Percival. Bizarre spoke of a second contract as well. As far as I know, Percival's already found someone else that might be looking into that. Another pawn chaser? Yeah, maybe. Do you know the name? No. And if we were to get the details and do the job ourselves? Look, one thing at a time, yeah? Okay. Percival just wants the jobs done. If you do them, and you show up at his doorstep, full, completed, tied up nice with a bow, yeah, I'd bet he'd give you some payment. Something lucrative. Mull affairs get a bad rap sometimes, but they do, mostly, pay out. That's why people continue to work for them. We are bounty hunters. That is what we are in the job for. Well, I didn't know if you'd have time for it or not. I was willing to offer you this little piece of mind. You help him, a little bit of a nudge, and he gets off your back. Stops blaming you for Bizarre's disappearance, which I know he is stewing there in his house. We will see that this task is done. All right, fine. I've got his address here. It's in Northern Bow Metal. You know what that is. Okay, yes. It's in Nova, yeah. Okay. Go further north of the alehouse. If you've gone into Deanst, you've gone too far. It's got a house number. Understood. If you find anything out, you're to write a note addressed to me, Captain Clearspire. Have it sent to the mailhouse where I can pick it up later. Hopefully that will be the end of our correspondence unless you plan on looking into it further. May I put any information into this? There's no need for secrecy, or... Put any information into what? Into your letter, the report I give. It's fine. Okay. He reaches into his pocket and pulls out a gold piece. If you need to send the letter... We'll pocket it. Sorry about your predicament. Kind of shrugs. Doesn't seem that sorry, but... Starts to turn, is there anything? No. Starts to turn and walk away. He kind of has kind of a, an, a sort of a aggressive gait. He kind of moves down the street with a little bit of a limp and a purpose as he sort of barrels his way through the crowd of Wampron, you know. What did I just say about hating cities again? I didn't like the way he was speaking to you, but I thought better of pressing. I appreciate the sentiment, but you chose wisely. <sighs> That's nothing. Gods. 
Ixar really did leave us a mess, didn't she? Well, we have some options. <laughs> we could. Options. Well, it sounds like our only option is to well, start this. Yes. Maybe the, not finish it. There's a start button. Yes, there's a gate that we have to leave. But I believe there's some roads. You're getting too metaphorical now. <laughs> I'm sorry. You lost me. Um, um, uh, um. I don't have the schooling. <laughs> Roads. <laughs> Road, gate, gatehouse. Button. <laughs> Where are we going? Hawks. What's a button? Hogs. The H- Llewellyn Hogs. Yeah. We have an opportunity to pick a side if we wanted. I'm thinking big things. The one who just threatened you. You want to go to their enemy. Well, if if we want to act with our wallets, we have that option. If we want to act on, if we have such a thing, a conscious you wanna, conscience. You want to use the information that he gave us to basically not, play. Not in the first step. Do this task, probably. <laughs> okay. But then we could. We could have an option. And then we go to Llewellyn Hoggs and say, we just shook down a northerner for the mall affairs, but here's some information about that. Or we help them stay one step ahead of the mall affairs investigation or anything. I don't know. This is if we care about these stupid fucking people enough. <laughs> the whole town. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh I mean, I, am, I clearly... I have my allegiance to... I've been frustrated as well. Okay. All right. I suppose we... We have to make up our minds right now. We start... Just an idea. I know. Well, we do have to make up our minds. Are we going to shake this person down right I don't now? know if we have much of an option when it comes to this. You... All you... right. Yep. Yes. Yes. You are correct. We do not have an option. We don't have to... We can do it humanely. Humanely? Yeah, what if I charm him or something? And get him killed later by the mall affairs. You think he'll get killed? They only fired... What's his toes? You know that for a fact? No. He said just fired. He would say that, wouldn't he? I don't know if the mall affairs would risk killing the Vika All right, all right. She says quietly. <laughs> all right. <laughs> we go to him first. We ease into it. And we reach... And then we reach out to Llewellyn. Perhaps. We don't have to do anything. I'm just saying. We have options. We don't have to be Malafair's lackeys. Yes. This is in the Upa. This is in the Upa. So we can head back to the west. Maybe do this uh, before we bust some skeleton skulls. Mm. Right. Or after. I don't know. Well, let's just see if he's home, I suppose, first. That's true. Hopefully Maybe he's not home. track him down. Oh. I hate cities. I know. I hate them. I know. I can't wait to go north. Same. It's terrible. It is. Can't believe all this time I've been wanting to get here, and this sucks. Just think about that. Think about the triumph of getting here. They feel pretty good. Okay, okay good. All right, let's go. No, but the cedarway. Cedarway. Oh, who do we get? Who do we get? No. Who do we get? Oh, roll. We go ahead and roll a d six. Oh. All right, all right. We're, we're gonna, sharing we're gonna, it, right? We we yeah, write yeah, people. Right, yeah. yeah. Five is um, birch, right? Five is birch. <laughs> you guess what I rolled? It was one. Handler Breton shows uh, up at right. the Steederway entrance. I'm sure he has his own qualities. And enjoy. quickly through the tunnels after marking down, that is rides seven and eight along the Steederway there. Yeesh. Um, Fucking day. Mark that down. So those are your... And again, you can continue to ride just mm-hmm. at, mm-hmm. at a regular old peasant's rate. I do have a goal. Oh. So you guys move quickly through the Steederway. You sort of now... You've gotten past the point where the Steederway is a little bit of a novelty, and it feels comfortable. Like, you, you've gotten used to it. It has a little bit of familiarity to it. You emerge from the Steederway in Naupa. 
surface air hitting you once again, and each time you've taken a ride, that contrast contrast of the dank, kind of stale below earth air and the above ground air, it feels like that's lessened over a time as you've grown accustomed to the transition. You've quickly kind of gotten used to the spider speed traveling, which isn't something you thought you'd say upon your first <laughs> arrival in the Garwas a few days ago. And the townships have clearly taken to it as well. People seem to know exactly where to line up. They know to have the exact amount of money in hand. People aren't kind of cool. rooting through. They're like ready at the, the door to hand over the amount of gold that they need to move to the other townships. They stay clear of arriving citizens who are exiting in a prompt and orderly fashion. And with the exception of some of the excitement and anticipation still worn on people's faces as they're in line. The Steederway looks like it's been a long-time fixture of the city already. People mm -hmm. have immediately taken to its convenience. And it's in part because of this that the woman seated on the ground near the exit stands out. Her positioning is somewhat in the way for people leaving the station that want to turn left toward the river, though she seems entirely unfazed by disapproving looks. People kind of walk by her and <laughs> ignores them completely as people in annoyance give her a little bit of a dirty look as they pass by. She's a half-elf with a hooded jacket that's lined extensively with fur. It's so pristinely white and soft that it looks like you could just kind of sink into it and fall asleep. Oh. Her dark, almost purple-tinted hair is woven back into a messy braid, and she wiggles an upturned nose kind of in concentration as she's examining a few large papers that are laid out on the ground in front of her. Maps, if you're not mistaken. As she hears the sound of footsteps from another batch of arrivals, including the two of you as you exit the, the, the steederway, she looks up. She wiggles her nose again. And then she reaches into a pocket to produce another piece of paper oh with some sketches of what look like faces. Your faces. And she holds it up. What? <laughs> Hi, I'm Gemma. Gemma Vippen. Oh. Over, right? Yeah. And Raven. You're the map seller. Yeah. Why do you have our faces? I'm supposed to meet with you today because I'm told you're leaving. And one of the advocates said they saw you get on the steed away, but I didn't really have time to chase you about, so I made my office here waiting for your return. No offense, but I'd like to be done with this. I have a lot of other work to do, but when you're commissioned by Cliff himself, you don't really say no. Correct. So look, I have here a few replications of one of my most popular maps. That of the northern reaches and the road to Dillisu. I'm told that you're not headed there, but rather to the Rapras. So the map stops short off to the west. A necessary corner to cut to get the maps done in time, I'm afraid. Now, it's not the most detailed work I've ever done, but it should keep you on track and give you an idea of what to look for if you veer from the roads. It's basically one of two viable routes up to the Myriad Meadow. And she, as she's rattling on, she hands over to you guys. Oh my god. god uh, I can finally that's, present. That's pretty rude. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Gemma. What? <laughs> she presents to you two <laughs> copies <gasps> of the Northern Reaches. That is beautiful. <laughs> oh my oh, so god. Pretty. Of Beyond gimme, gimme, gimme. Navika Pora. Yep, I, I've got another one. Oh, you, of course you do. I know, you'll have prize. Look at this. So you look at the oh. sort of oh my God. extensive skill that she's gone to draw the various portions oh, of... Oh, it's the on the mainland! Good job! Uh, let me move to the close-up there. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Lake Chikuchi. I knew you were going to fucking say that. I knew you were... That's what I giggled at. <laughs> oh my goodness. Chikuchi. There's nothing you can name that people won't yeah. turn into a silly joke. <laughs> Lake Chikuchi. So she shows you she has a number of these copies of the northern wow. reaches here. Ugh. Now there's basically two viable routes up to the Myriad Meadow, through the fields or through the Stout Hill Corridor. And from the meadows, you'll skirt along the edges of the Ebwoods until you reach the mountains. There's a stone archway near the base of the elevation where it starts to climb that serves as a good landmark. Apparently whoever you're meeting is going to find you there. And she points, and it's that yeah. area mm. where the two lines, the, the yeah. yellow and the red, meet there up near the Ropper Mountains. You see that? Now, the safest route by far is through the Hakathrice fields, and that's the yellow route that she's mm -hmm. talking about. It's pretty much the road that 99% of travelers take when they're going on from Dillisun. But I don't know what your situation is, and if you like to avoid crowds or just prefer a bit of solitude, you can take the Stout Hill Corridor. 
Plenty of wildlife to watch out for along the Free Run River, now that you're following the corridor, if you choose to take that. As well as opportunistic Elatrian elves. I wouldn't say they're known for ambushing travelers, but it does happen. Especially if you don't look like you're affiliated with a known organization like the Broken Crown or something. They're also very territorial, so I'd pack rations, keep your hunting and foraging to a minimum. That's what? very helpful information. What is that little tent? Broken Crown. Oh. They have an outpost there. Okay. How how large? Small. Only a few, only manned by a few. Um, probably a dozen or so. Okay. You're also, of course, welcome to plan your own route if you want to do something wacky. But time is a factor. These are really your only two options. Both are comparable in travel time, assuming you don't get too held up in one way or another. At a decent pace, leaving today in the early afternoon, you should arrive at the Rapros maybe in the evening two days from now. Possibly the third day's morning if you take it a little easier. Any questions I can answer for you? What about this little, um... One of these, um... What is happening? There's like an overhand, um... The teeming arch there? Yes, the right arch. Right by the teeming arch. Yeah. What is that? It's just a bit of rock formation that you pass under. Oh, okay. If you choose to take that route. Right. I'm seeing, like, a grayed-out pathing on the east coast. What about it? Is that the popular traveling path, just in case we take a different route south? Sure. It's the most commonly traveled path from Wamparani, not Avern. Oh, okay. That's good to know. It does take you through both Uberfen and the Wachu Barrens, which I wouldn't say are friendly to travel, but there is a road that keeps you out of most of the danger. Hmm. What is the Uchpafen dotted with? Uchpafen is said to be enchanted. Hmm. The water's there. Oh. Wow. This is, um, this is fantastic work. Thank you. Thank you. A uh, question for you. Yes. Um, we were told when we were in Tuktu that Frank Sobel was actually heading up north. Do you and him speak? I know Frank. I haven't seen him. Oh, okay. He was um, escorting somebody. We we were hoping to actually buy some of his wares and ask about his uh, preferred path north, but he was already headed to you, actually. Well, I know the north better than he does, so... Oh, mm -hmm. no, I would never, ever presume. I just wasn't sure if um, he made it here safely is all. Okay. All right. We don't owe you any gold for this. Cliff's already paid for it. Excellent. Thank you for this. Um, Anything else? No. Any questions? Up to, uh, no. no. Okay, fine. <laughs> she puts her papers together, stuffs them in her bag. Do you want to hang on to this? Um, Who drew this? I did, from their description. Oh, you're very it's good. Very Thanks. accurate. Maybe I could... Uh, cut it trade. out and then put it, put them next to each other. So it's like a picture of you and me. Okay. Thank you. All right. Good luck. Bye. She gets up, gathers her things, slings it over her shoulder. She has that big puffy hood that she pulls over the top of her head. She starts to move along. Again. So you guys can see a number of the. Let me actually pull this around so I can make it easier on myself. Beautiful. Yes. Beautiful. Shout out to. Uh, Wonder Draft. Oh, <laughs> that's great. Uh, the same people who did Dungeon Draft was another really good tool for making maps and things. So some of the things you've heard today are on this thing. You can see yeah. the Ebwoods up the there Ebwoods. just south of the Ropper Mountains. Let me yeah. my laser The main sail. Yeah, the Ebwoods up there. Yep, the mains, the mast and the mainsail, the two crags over there on the right and the uh, Wakku Barrens. Barrens. Yep. Yeah. And these are the four townships, of course. Naupa, yeah. Nakuzi, Nagarwa, Swamp Ranina. So how close... How close is what the top right is here to like where the the pass is to the uh, you know the, the to Finlock Forest? Yeah, it's further north than that. I mean, it's past yeah. Vern, so it's yeah. this isn't a com you know it's not it, this doesn't this map doesn't reach the northern coast. Right. Um, so the only real city that we see here is Vern and uh, Golrapalga. Is kinda, yes, those are both settlements. And again, there might be other very small settlements, yeah. but she's only marking reasonably major settlements. And then if you take that path further west, presumably you More. reach uh, Dillasun at some point. Uh, Dillasun if you go Yes, yeah, so if you way. keep going that way, yep. Okay. Um, anything else that was mentioned? <sighs> I think that was pretty much it. Mm -hmm. And Trixer's right. thicket, of course. Of course. What about the... <laughs> 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 the Chuchis? Uh The Chuchi, you know. No, I was going to say the... What about the Sacred Grove? Mm. Mm. Yeah. So, like, if I were to tear this in half, and and you were to mend it, can you mend not on the, like... No. 
It has to no. be the break. Oh, would. so I got to find some some glue. Yes. <laughs> Perhaps a frame if I just frame it. I, you look dashing. Uh, She's pretty good. <laughs> look at that. It's, don't we usually not want to keep around like this is of ourselves when it's possible that people can track us down? Yeah, but these ones That's are... That's why I was so rude to her to begin with. These, was, these ones aren't on wanted posters or... Or like, go fuck them up posters. They're just, it's just us. Why don't you just keep it for now and don't, you know. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, so. (laughs) (laughs) We've got, what, baby steps. Mm -hmm. What's left on the agenda? We go interview this guy. Mm -hmm. And we bust some skulls. Mm -hmm. And that's it, right? Mm -hmm. That's Navigapora. That is Navika Pura, isn't it? Busting heads. Yeah, I was hoping Celis would talk to me, but... There's still time. Let's he see. did say that... I know. Oh. Okay. <laughs> 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 Just be honest. That he would meet you when you picked up your, yeah. like, stuff that you ordered. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ask All right, let's go bust some heads. Who's... Or a head. <laughs> the guy. Okay. I can't even remember his name. Morgul Busk. Busk. Mogul. Mogul Busk. Mogul Busk. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Busk. <laughs> Coming for you. Okay, so we're gonna head to the north of the Uba Ale House. Yeah. The, um, head up through Bow Myrtle. Mm-hmm. And is, so you head up to the north as part of Naupa that you haven't really oh explored before. I need more paper. And you find it surprisingly easy to avoid accidentally wandering into Deans. There's a well-defined line between reasonably comfortable living and then the obvious display of wealth when it comes to the homes, their size, the construction, the yards, the gardens. So Deans has a very next level of wealth look to it, and it's easy to kind of ride that line as you continue further north. Like We don't know this, but uh, Erlen ran into the Mollifer estate in Deans there, right? When no, went, the Mollifer estate actually was not... You mean... Uh, when he went into the river in Lapatro and like came out in Deans. Yes. So that... Um, you guys are moving way further north than that. Huh? Oh. So the Mollifer is along the river. Yes. Yeah. The Mollifer, and then yeah. we're going... You're okay, going further north. Yeah. So the Mollifer estate is actually not in Deans. Okay. Um, so he's sort of cultivating his own little wealthy corner of his own. And some of the bone myrtle homes have long fences that stretch way out in the distance. Pastures for horses and cattle that butt up against the farmlands monopolized by a few large estates in the area. In what must have been a fairly recent development, given their uniformity of design, wooden numbers have been nailed to fences, gates, and doors. Some attempt at urbanization as Navigapura continues to grow, and also perhaps a helpful tool for the mail house as it processes the high volume of post and packages coming in and out. And the further north you go, the higher the numbers rise. You finally arrive at the hundreds. 105. A few more. 110. 111. 112. 113. And 114. And if you're at the right place, Mogul's residence doesn't have nearly the same outdoor acreage as some of the surrounding homes. But unlike the traditional wooden design of his neighbors, the house looks like a fortress Hmm. or a bunker, not in size. But whether out of paranoia or simply to demonstrate his skill in metallurgy, every window is barred varying designs in the wrought iron, and Mm. the front door is like a solid sheet of steel with pin locks that anchor into the wall. So it's this, almost, it looks like a lockbox, but big enough to be a home, like all of the metal covering the windows and the doors, and and so it's this weird little sort of iron hovel here in the middle of all these beautiful, more pastoral properties that surround it. So. So... This man will have no incentive to help us. I agree. What I'm thinking is also because I don't know this person and I don't care for either side of the cause that he's fighting on, but I don't want to hurt him. So what if we approach it a little more politically? Um... We're both 
kind of under the thumb of mall affairs. Like, what if we're what if we're fairly transparent? We're we are forced into a position with the mall affairs as well. And if there is some kind of lead he can give us, whether or not it becomes fruitful, if he can place blame elsewhere, and give up one of his own for us, who he does not know. But he could be lying. And he's probably working with who I'm, I'm assuming Llewellyn Hoggs is behind some of this. So, again, that's helping them stay a, a step ahead. So, you suggest that we get fake information from him. We tell him that we want fake information to give on to the model of all affairs. Or suggest it? I guess, who's... If we're about to embark on this, whose side are we on? I don't think it matters what side we're on. It, if we take that captain at his word, we come here on the side of the mall affairs then, because they are the ones who are threatening us right now. And so we are here because they told us to be. Right. But, are we looking to please the Mal affairs? Because we could get chess pieces for Bazara. I know where to send them. On her behalf. Or... And so... No, go ahead. No. No, no, no you, please. No, you. I said, on that line of thinking, this is a shakedown. Yes. This is us embracing that position. Or, do we not want to reintroduce chess pieces into our lives, and maybe choose the side of the locals? What do you feel? I don't understand most of this kind of thing. I've never had a home and never really cared, so... But... I don't like the Malafares. They are powerful. They are unloved here. I don't know what it would mean for Cliff, either. My instinct... interest of your safety is right now leaning me towards the mall affairs. I don't like it. Okay. I don't think you're wrong. But I also don't want the northerners Fuck them all affairs. What was that change all about? It's not right. They throw around their money and their power the way they do. Fuck them all affairs. Do you agree? Send them down a rabbit hole? Try. We can feign ignorance if we need to. With them. Honestly. But, but we can be honest with this man. Yeah. Roughing him up might not help. Or might <laughs> might help. If he's if it 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 uh, faking roughing him up, I mean. Oh, um, um, okay. um agreeing to <laughs> rough him up. In order to make it seem like it was yes. genuinely a, a shakedown. He would have he, to agree to that. And he was coerced. Yes, of course. Okay. I'm not, yes, I'm getting consent before I, I, I okay. I'm not going to punch him. I can't do I anything. I mean, again, this is, that would be him giving up quite a bit just for strangers. I agree. So, But see. let's enter this house with this conviction and see how it goes. Okay. All right. Here we go. What's going on? Front door. It's 
So as you hit it, it has that kind of hollow metal sound. <laughs> Just a minute. Shouting from the interior. Give me a perception check as well. Both of us? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. 14. 14. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it fell from a 16 to a 16. Nine. Nine. The metal is doing a pretty good job from a distance, but as you get closer to the front door and you go to bang on the door, from the inside sounds like a zoo of animals, noises, squawking, a little growling, some like like heavy wing fluttering noises, all kinds of animalistic noises coming from the interior, like all at the same time, some of them fading in and out. You'll hear kind of a harsh, sharp howl and then some growling. And then in response, like a little bit of maybe clanging something, clawing at like a gate or a cage or something. All this like noise coming up. And as you bang on the door and someone says that just a minute, as it sounds like someone's approaching the door, the noises sound to get, so as the person's walking by these animals, presumably a little bit of that noise picks up. And the pins in the door begin to turn. And the door opens up, and the noise washes over you. And you can look over his shoulder and see inside dozens of cages of all kinds. This man keeps wild animals and creatures of all sorts in his place, and each one of them. It looks like that, as a as a metallurgist himself, the cages are very specially and intricately designed. This seems to be something that he does as a hobby or as a profession. These very specifically designed cages. You see over his shoulder a giant wasp that's in this large sort of cell-like cage that's sort of moving from spot to spot in its cage. There's another kind of wolf-like creature that has... Not a cramped, but like a smaller little den as it kind of moves back and forth, keeping an eye on the door and the new people that have arrived. There's a wolf, a wasp, uh, some kind of giant arachnid creature. There's, because you've seen them before, there's a cage that has a couple, and the, the cage is very fine and crisscrossing of sturges, those little oh, mis yeah. like mosquito bat creatures that are like sort of flapping in one of these cages. And again, each one's very specifically designed. That one has these lattice-like metal uh, grating to prevent them from sticking their little sort of Ugh. pronged yeah. beaks oh, through that you can it. see them from a distance. There's a giant rat in one of the cages, a lizard in another one. So all of these creatures sort of clattering, making a little bit of clamor behind him as he arrives at the door. A shorter, he looks like he's in his 30s, maybe late 30s, uh, but he's shorter with a little mop of hair, kind of hunched over with a poncho that looks like it has maybe bird shit on it. He has some kind of outer layer that he has to protect himself from the creatures. It has like loose threads and scratch marks from different creatures that may have sort of, he's been handling these creatures. He has a very heavy set of gloves that are thick on his fingers that make his hands seem bigger than they actually are. Um, yes, can I help you? Well. Um, Mr. Busk. Uh, yes, are you here to commission something from me? Uh, not exactly. Like, buy one of these things? Oh, not the animals, no. Uh, I make cages, mostly. There's oh. a lot of call for exotic pets or research purposes. These are all yours. Of course. Wow. Uh, can't make a cage for something that you don't understand. Interesting. Just continue to Sentiment. gather them. Well, I have them for a while, make a cage, and then I usually sell them to somebody else or set them free. That's wow. fascinating. It's a lot of work. It is a lot of work. Um, we are actually here to follow up on a, a, a different piece. You'll have to speak as you're talking. There's like a... Oh. <laughs> Just the sounds of animal noises. So somewhere a little quieter that we can speak. Um, I hate to leave them. I'll push the door closed a little. And he leaves it kind of a sliver open. It quiets it a little bit. You can still yeah. kind of hear the noise. So we're out on, on outside, the front yeah, porch? On the front step, yeah. And he still kind of has his big gloves on. He doesn't take them off. 
just in case I need to rush in. Oh, of course. I, um, well, I would like to invite myself into your home, but first we'll say that we're here to kind of follow up on a past project of yours. Oh, all right. A recommendation from someone else? Not exactly. It, can we actually speak inside, perhaps? Um, it might be loud inside, but all right. Is there any kind of creature that, uh, that you're scared of that I could cover with a, a tarp or something? Why don't we just stay out here for now? Okay. Well, no, come on inside. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. I don't mind. No, no I just don't here. want you to have a panic attack. No. No, no need. No. Oh, please. <laughs> and he reaches into that little crevice. And once again, the sounds of animals comes over. As you step inside, you see a few more creatures, a couple more of those spiders. It looks like also another creature that uh, you, in the Den of Sands, you dealt with a different one. These mephits, which are these sort of uh, oh, yeah. flying creatures that have different elements associated mm -hmm. with them. They look; These ones look like mud mephits. They're sort of dripping with <laughs> sort of elemental earth <laughs> energy as they kind of yes. move around their cages. They do fly, but they also, when they're on the ground, they use their wings as kind of big flippers and they kind of waddle their way across the cage. So you see them moving That's through so their cool. cages. Uh, welcome uh, to my uh, workshop, as it were. It's, like I said, a little noisy, but they keep me company. And you look down, it, there's like a long hallway that goes down. There's cages further down that are bigger cages that look like maybe they house larger animals. You don't know if anything's in them because you can't see all the way down the hallway. But this first open room mostly has small cages of, of you know, medium or smaller sized yeah. animals as you're looking around the I'll interior. Give a peek down the, <laughs> the alley there. and What's the largest thing that you house here? Oh, it depends. Like I said, uh, I uh, usually release or sell them when I'm done. Right now I have a, a snow leopard that I took from the mountains. You took? Yes, I go out and get some of them myself. Not all of them, but some of you, them. You're a trapper as well. Yes, well, like I said, to understand them you have to be able to work with them. Get along with our elf friend a little bit, I think. Yes. Um, well, a pleasure to meet you. Um, we... <sighs> Orba's gonna try to speak up a little louder because she sees him <laughs> leaning like, in. Ah, 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 <laughs> some, like, loud God. squawking coming from <clears throat> the cages. Uh, we, we come regarding a fairly sensitive matter that I'm, I'm hoping that we can come to an understanding on. That Actually. sounds ominous. It's kind of, yeah. It's a little. Oh. So, not necessarily of our own volition. We are here to ask questions regarding the Steeder Way. I did some work for the Steeder Way, yeah. Great. The valves. Yes, the malice valves. Uh, not normally my uh, preferred area of expertise, but the Steeder Way was a big project, so they reached out to a number of metal workers, myself among them. I, I think Seasom was one. If you've been over to the backer saddle blacksmith, he did some work as well. Did he also do the valves? Um, some of them, I think. I did the ones over in Nagarwis. Um, right. Some of my best work that isn't cage-related, I would say. Does that seem oh, like yeah. he's... Uh, Make an inside check. Good telling the truth. <laughs> now is the time to roll, Anthony. Mm -hmm. You will roll the die. Now is the day. Jesus... Nine. He's sort of forthcoming in earnest. It's hard to tell. I mean, he didn't seem suspicious about yeah. it, but, uh, you know, yeah. difficult to say. Um, have you not been made aware that it's possible your work is, is, is already showing signs of increased age? <laughs> I'm sure that couldn't possibly be the case. Is whatever materials you used on those specific items, is it? The same material that you use have used in the past is it you've gotten it from the same sources as you do yeah they're just iron valves nothing fancy did you ever test to see if the um malice would um 
uh, I guess... Corrode in some yes, way. Yes, corrode. Malice doesn't corrode iron. Humid conditions over time would. Who exactly is making these accusations of uh, corrosion of the valves? To be completely honest, Percival Mollifair. He and his captains seem to think that your work was not as... You seem to take pride in your work. I do? And you seem like an honest man. I am? I'm not saying this. But they seem to think that that is not the case on this particular job. And yet, they're not here, so it seems like... And he points a big, kind of comically large gloved finger. seems like you are here saying this. You telling me that I... I understand. Work? I understand. I'm trying to tell you that I understand why you and anyone here in the North would not want to even be involved with the likes of them. Now hang on, what exactly are you trying to say? I'm trying to say that if I lived here, I might try to fuck with them myself. Would you now? Make a persuasion check with disadvantage. Oh, you gotta. You gotta do it, Mary. Huh? 13. Okay. Well, I guess that's the difference between you and me. When I say I'm gonna do a job, I do it. And that's what I did. Sir, we don't expect you to welcome us with open arms, but we are trying here. What exactly are you trying to do? We're trying to at least inform you that as of now, according to Percival Malafair, whom we do not represent, and, uh, except for this one circumstance. Yeah, except for this one circumstance. Beyond our control, his... Your name is on the forefront of his brain. I don't know if you've noticed, but his projects have not been going super well in the Vigopora, and I do not care if you have been helping with that or not. But I'm just trying to warn you and let you know that they came to us with this information, and apparently your valves, out of the other valves in the Steeder Way, are showing signs that maybe it wasn't at the best of your work. And I don't know if somebody's trying to frame you, or if you're doing it yourself, and again, I don't care. I don't like being accused of doing poor work. Do you know of somebody who would try to tamper with this? Maybe one of the other um, engineers that were a part of this or anything? Or somebody that would want to smear you, particularly. So you're asking me to what? Throw another one of my northerners under the cart so the mullifers can bowl them over? Can you surmise any reason as to why your valves would show signs of corrosion after so few days. You can't just, as a, as a professional. Have you seen the valves? No, sir. I've got one theory. They're lying. And they told you to come here because of some other suspicion they had, which I don't appreciate, by the way. So you think they merely just suspect you of being a part of this resistance? I think they're taking shots in the dark because of whatever happened over there when the Steederway got stalled. Do you have any way of following up on the valves? Checking in? Maybe even seeing if you could fix... There was faulty mechanics at one point, but that was... There's people who do maintenance, but that's not my job. You would have no reason to find an excuse? To go to that tunnel, specifically? Why would I want to do that? I don't know, to see the sabotage at work. To see evidence of it. I don't even know that there is any sabotage. All I have is your word for it. And I don't know who you are. My name is Orba, and this is my companion, Graven. That's fine. We're not from here. I know. The Mall Affairs have us in a corner. And rather than... 
blindly follow their word. We're trying to understand and commiserate with the locals and the Novikaporans. Make persuasion checks. Be better than me. It's a natural 20. Thank you. I am better Thank than you. you. You are better than me. Thank you. All affairs have a knack for getting people into corners sometimes. Yes, that seems to be their prime profession. Okay, so what are you asking of me exactly? I'm not going to throw another one of my northerners under just so I can, I don't know, get out from under his eye. We don't expect you to. When you were building these, there was no... um consulting the person who is installing the malice or anything. Perhaps you were a misinformed metallurgist? Is that what the word is? Sure. Metallurgist? Um, and, and the materials... Uh, could somebody have set you up for failure, possibly? Did you consult with... Was there a team? Anything? Sure, there's a whole bunch of people that work on the Steeder way. I never even went down there myself. I made all the valves here. Shipped them over to Nagarwitz. Any connections that you, that the Malafairs made, a, a Malafair, um, someone who had any kind of collaboration with you that was a, one of theirs? No, I worked alone. If there was. On those valves, like I said, see some worked on some of them. If there was any kind of aging in, in in the valves, how would somebody get it done quickly like that? Is I don't that know. Mean? You'd put something on it to make it corrode quickly. Like a chemical? I don't know. Maybe, yeah. You wouldn't have any knowledge of, of a specific chemical that would be used? Something Not an alchemist. You There's know, things that make metal corrode that quickly, though? I don't know. Make an inside check. Okay. Me? Yeah. You're, he answers are your you question. Forfeiting yeah. rolling here. Nice. <laughs> you just stand there. Yeah. Ah! Ah! Oh, shit, where my character should go. That was a 13, but. Ooh. I never make inside checks. 15. 15. I mean, as you ask that question, it, the only thing is that it just strikes you as a, perhaps a little odd that some um, a metallurgist of skill would not. Have a better knowledge right. of maybe what would what would cause that. Um, you don't pick up that. You, you, that just strikes you as odd as you sort of hear that information. This work is steed away is is unprecedented. Yes. Sure. I mean, I All these think they've got parts. one over in Pachacama. A steeder way. Yes. Do you know of any problems that they had with that one? <sighs> if we were to speak to an alchemist, would that provide any insight for you? <laughs> what does that do for me? My main objective here is to get the mall affairs possibly onto the wrong track. Why would you want to do that? They said they got you backed into a corner. That's what you said. Yes, and we will technically be out of said corner if we provide them with a lead, essentially. They didn't say it had to pan out. I'm sure they won't be pleased with us. And honestly... And why would you stick your neck out for me? Honestly, not just you. We've been in situations with the Mall Affairs before we know them well, and we're never on the same side. And we're trusting that we're on the correct side today, too. So you come here, backs against the wall, courtesy of the Mull Affairs, just to offer me a, a friendly way out. If you were in my shoes, would you trust you? No. We're not. 
you are. And our other option when we came here is not a road that I want to go down. I'm done with that. But it's a road you considered. I consider all things. This is what I have chosen. Make an intimidation check. Oh. These are never as good as I want them. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you always want them to be good? Thirteen. Look, I... I don't know, I... I, I probably have my old diagrams from when I made the vows, right? Yes. Maybe you could... Maybe you could look at them and, um, I don't know, pretend that something about the design, because I was given these designs by the team working on the Steederway. Maybe you could say that the design itself was faulty and not my construction of it. And Who if, made the designs? They came down from the Mull Affairs, as far as I know. If they argued that other valves in the tunnel aren't showing these signs? Well, I don't know. We were given presumably different sets of designs. They might have been the same design, but I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe you could say, theoretically, that the designs that I got were a little different. Because, like you said, maybe someone was setting me up. So they took all the designs, but the ones that I got were wrong. Would it be better then for us not to see them so that they can't ask us any questions about them? Any specifics? You can say that they're gone. That you destroyed them. And threw them away. I could say that. But what benefit does that do to me or you? Well, what I'm saying is that if we come back to them with this faulty design story, they might... Ask if we saw them, or ask if you have them, to compare. And that would not be good, if we have seen them, or if they do still exist. Well, what if, maybe in your handwriting, not mine, you added to the diagrams? Maybe on the diagram it said to add something to the valve that would cause corrosion. Does that make sense as a professional? I have no means of understanding what you're saying, really. I mean, I don't think that captain has a mind for design, do you? I mean, they have all the money in the world. They could hire a specialist, you know what I mean? They're right, thorough. <laughs> it gets through the first line of defense, is what I'm saying. Sure, yeah. Can we see them? I can go get them. Can you give me a second? Yes. Alright. Uh... Try not to spook the animals. Sure. He wanders. He moves down that hallway. You can hear his footsteps on the on the stone walkway there. Why can't people just trust me? <sighs> As I said, he has no he has no incentive. Whoever's all the promises that he's made are the people that he knows and loves. People who have supported him. The people around him. You think he's a part of it? Of course. I don't blame him. I don't either. It's it's honestly quite ingenious what they've managed to do. I was wondering if there was a way to blame whoever he gets his metal from. If he has a supplier, maybe it was a simple, you know, bad batch. Right. I don't know. I don't know anything about metal. You could, you could ask him that when he comes back. He's not going to throw that guy under the cart either. You're right. trying. No, you're doing such a, you're doing a better job than I am. You're doing what? so good. No, I'm not. Oh my goodness, you are oh, tugging at my heartstrings when you I say I, I look at all roads and I chose this one. I don't want to go down that road well, anymore. It sounded like a sad. threat. I'm sure it sounded like a threat. Well, you're just a very threatening kind of guy. I suppose. It doesn't help. 
You're doing a really good job. All right. I have no idea what I'm doing. Neither do I. I don't like talking to people. I usually choose violence. Yeah, that's not. Okay. Okay. A couple minutes pass. As you, you, it sounded like you heard... Well, give me perception checks, both of you. <laughs> give me with disadvantage. There's a lot of noise from the animals here. Oh, uh... Fifteen. Six. Six. It sounded like after you moved down that hallway where some of the larger cages were, it sounded like there was a staircase of some kind. And then you looked at the exterior and it looked one story, so possibly a staircase down. Like, yes, an archive or a library or something. So you heard footsteps and then what sounded like kind of a descending kind of series of footsteps. So that after that happened, a couple minutes kind of went by. You guys are just kind of standing up here looking at all the animals in the cages around you. Some time passes. I hope he's not down there setting a trap or telling some friends to ambush us after this. I hate Sithies. We didn't really even offer the idea of um, being spies. What if he wants spies? Spying on the Malafares. Yeah. How would we do that? I don't know. Play like a like a like a, like a double person, you know. We also don't have much time. I know. I know. It's not like we have time to infiltrate Percival's inner circle here. I know. There's no time for anything. Another minute passes. Did he run? Can Orba? We don't hear anything of, of footsteps coming back or anything. Give me another perception check with disadvantage. Oh my god. Nine. Nine, yeah. And nothing over the sounds of the creatures in their cages. Can Orba follow the path that he took? Like, walk down the hallway? Yeah. You can. Orba's That's, going to. be careful. Slowly. Go after her. Yeah. The Orba starts to walk down the hallway. As you move past, the, the cages are big enough to your left and right that it's a little dark, and at one point you hear kind of a... And you see kind of a set of eyes emerge oh, from the gosh. darkness into the lantern, and it's quite a beautiful creature, like a snow leopard-esque oh, creature shit. that... Slowly. Yep, Orba's gonna... Slowly. It's in a cage, well. but yeah, as you yeah. Can continue to move Don't down Don't get close to it. <laughs> Just continue to walk. You get to the end of the hallway, it takes a little right, and then as you sort of heard, there's a stone staircase that descends spiraling down into the ground. Mogril? What? Is it, Mogril is Mogril. Mogril. Yeah. Mogril. It, there's no door, it's just... No, nope, just staircase. Should we just call for him? Mogril! Echoes a little bit. Mogril. I was gonna descend the stairs. Uh. <laughs> Puts one foot on the top step, stops. Orba. I, I don't have detect magic. I have very little magical reserves left myself. Yeah. Okay. Orba's going to go into her backpack. Oh my god. And she's going to. Take out. Oh hold a moment. She's going to take out. Oh! I have a whole person. What? I have a whole person. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. She has a spool of thread. Okay. She's going to take out a spool of thread and she's going to roll it down the stairs. Okay. You hear it kind of as it hits each step. It probably goes down, I mean, a spool of thread. I mean, maybe 10, 15 stairs. And then it kind of pulls tight. Oh, no, I'm just rolling the whole thing. I'm not trying to hang on. Oh, I thought you were holding it. Oh, no, I'm just... Okay. It kind of hits off one mount. You can hear it reach a bottom, possibly. It stops rolling down that stair. Checking for booby traps, you know. (laughs) Booby trap. Human-sized booby trap might not get set off by a, a spool of thread. I'm trying, Graven. I'm trying. I'm going downstairs. Orb. She's going to start going down the stairs. Starts one. Follow her. <laughs> Are quickly, quietly, quietly. No, okay. slowly. <laughs> but like, going like, Mogul. Morg- Morgul. <laughs> Mogul. 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 Mogli. Mogli. Mog, mog. Mog, mog. Moogie, loogie. <laughs> Damn it. stealth checks, folks. Oh my god. Oh, this guy's about to loose all these animals Six. on us. Nine. Six and nine. <laughs> oh. 
The floor is completely uncarpeted and it's stone. I mean, your boots sort of clack against the stone there. It's it's not quiet as you descend. I mean, you're doing your best not to create a disturbance, but it's certainly not quiet. The, the staircase kind of rotates once around, once around once more. And is, the, it, is it dark? Is it starting to get there dark? Are, so there are uh, oil lamps. Line, so he had his home lit. Yeah. There's oil lamps in here. So it, it, you're not descending into pitch darkness. Okay. I'm going to light uh, a vol rag up. Ooh, <laughs> and double G. His face uh, just like really light. So, Gives it, so it really I can kind of look into the corners and on the edges yeah. of the steps. and It spreads see. all into the corners of yeah. the edges of the staircase and things. As it, And each time you revolve around the staircase, it lights up the next sort of quarter there of the turn. Mm -hmm. And you get down to the bottom of the staircase, and like his front door, there's another steel door with these rotating pins that is closed at the bottom of the staircase. It's, since he left, it's been like a full five. Yeah, more than five minutes. More than five yeah, like minutes. Five, we'll say five-ish okay. minutes since he left. Okay. okay. It's the just the door. There's nothing yep, else down it here. It gets down to the bottom. There's no window in the door. Not, it looks exactly like a steel door at the front. Or I was going to knock on it. <laughs> oh, girl! Give me perception checks, both of you. Five. Ten. Ten. Thank God. Coming from upstairs. Fuck, fuck me. Just a very faint, and it sounds like when he first opened the door, like yeah. a... Oh my God. Faster closed us in. Up the stairs, not quickly, but... God damn it! I can't up think so smooth. Okay. What is wrong with me? Up the stairs. Quickly Something back up the stairs. The, the mace kind of lighting the way as you push your way back up. It's it's only one and a half rotation, so it doesn't yeah. take long to get back up to the top. You get back up to the top. The light cascades down that hallway. You look out into the sort of front area. And at this point, with the light and a little bit of the noise, the beasts are clamoring. Things kind of <laughs> rattling at the edges of their cages. Like, <laughs> All these animals kind of They're barking, all still caged in. They though. are currently all still caged in. Yep. And do we see the door that we came in? If you were to go down through the hallway, yep, you can get to the... What's the other way? What's if we kept going it, it past? Ends. The hallway ends and then it goes down the staircase. Okay. That's it. It's, yeah. Okay. There's the hallway with the, with the big cages on your right yep. and left, and then the main room that has the smaller cages with okay. all of those animals inside. Medium pace back towards the door that we came yeah. in. And again, you get a little halfway through that hallway and you hear kind of a... And the snow leopard kind of emerges from the darkness. Give me an animal handling check. Oh, Jesus. Fifteen. Fifteen. As you sort of comfort it quietly, you're a little bit further away from the other animals, so you can focus on it. And it takes one big paw forward. And then it kind of curls back into the cage there. Move your way back out into that main sort of entryway room. Mogro, please... We don't see him in here. Are, how loud are you saying? Are you... I mean... You don't see him in here. Okay. Um, and the, do the door is... We're here by the door? Is the door closed? So you're here by the door. You, you Were you following Graven up? Yes. Okay, we'll say you're kind of in that hallway moving toward it, but you've reached the door. Is it, Can I open it? Give me... Uh, you, you reach out. <laughs> it's locked. <laughs> are there mechanisms on it? Dead. Give me a uh, investigation check. This is, I am I am so mad at myself. Seventeen. Seventeen. You look around the edges looking for any little thing, and as you look up to the top where the kind of top beam is, there's what looks like almost a metal funnel that's sort of jutting out from the wall. It looks like a little concave funnel mm -hmm. that goes into the wall with a little metal pipe, and from it you hear... Can you hear me up there? Yes, I can. Good. Listen closely. And that's where we're going to end this. No fucking way! <laughs> no! Why don't I learn? Why don't I learn? I don't <laughs> learn anything. And as Morgul perhaps continues to evaluate whether you are friend or foe, that is where we will pick it up next time. God he has not it. loosed the animals. 
He has not. <laughs> oh, yet. that's great. <laughs> with, oh, with great. The implication that he could. The the again, you didn't pick up a overtly hostile vibe, but you did pick up certainly his level of suspicion yes. and, and mistrust at yep. someone coming into hey, his home. Hey, maybe he'll trust us. Stick to our guns. Stick and to that. Possible discussion to continue to be had with Mogrel. And then you guys have to decide what to report or not back oh, to my. the captain. That is where we'll pick it up next week. Bizarre! <laughs> 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 I'll bring Bizarre's head on a stick. <laughs> God fucking damn that it. That is where we'll pick this up next week. And you know what we'll pick up next week with? Chapter the one. last <laughs> chapter oh God. God. of season one of The Week Beneath the Veil. Holy crap. We've been talking about it for so far. Fucking long. I can't wow. believe it's finally upon us. I can't us. believe it. Um, I'm so very incredible. Excited. Thank you guys so much for joining us on this for this little Orba and Graven uh, misadventure. <laughs> misadventure. What yeah. the f uh, is wrong with me? What do you mean, you? Why are you blaming yourself so because much? Because I just literally less than 48 oh, hours ago for trap? Graven, I went into a goddamn <laughs> trap. Trap. And now I brought you into one. <laughs> <laughs> well, my my gifted another sub, so thank oh. you very much. Thank you so so, so thank much. you. <laughs> thank you so much to everybody joining us uh, joining us on this. Um, uh. It means everything, and we will pick it back up with a full cast of characters. Yeah, next good week John and Riley back here. For, uh, maybe we'll uh, push the boundaries a little. We went a little late today, but we maybe Ooh. we might uh, have one episode one hundred. Make sure we get everything done. A long and, spice. Uh, yeah, a little, little extra length episode, perhaps, um, to make sure that we. Leave Navika Pora or stay locked in. No new conversations. We're not. If someone no. is like, excuse me, no. <laughs> it's like no. bomb on their face. And push. <laughs> it's like in airplanes yeah. and they're like, yeah. excuse me, sir. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> We're done. No more new friends. We can't no. have that. Hashtag no new friends. <laughs> I am sorry to myself and to you and. Uh, oh, well, thank you all. Yes, thank you to everybody so, thank so, you. so, so much. Um, again, we'll be back here next week, same time, 7 o'clock Eastern. Yeah. Um, and we will continue once again. We can show the map because that is where we're headed. Oh, we're yeah, do it. Up. Unbelievable. Look at us headed north of the Vikapora. Finally. Oh, look at it. Look at it. Um, and we oh. will... Um, you guys have to decide what route to take. You have to consult the. Uh, Damn, we have to do elves. that again. Ugh. I feel like we just did that um, with Navigapora. Well, okay. places to go, things to see, lodestones to activate. <laughs> lodestones. I'll, by next episode, I'll be a married man. <laughs> oh, that's oh! right. <laughs> yes. Congratulations. Friday. Not that that matters to anybody else, but officially it Friday. Does. Thursday. Thursday, officially. Yeah. Congratulations to Mr. and Mrs. Ilvigo. <laughs> That's right. That's right. You better be watching right now. I love you. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. Congratulations yeah. to yeah. Mr. Ilvigo. And Mr. Ilvigo. we wish good health to John and Riley yes. and yeah. a safe return back. of Erlen and Safira. Mm. And we'll figure out if they remember what they were doing, hunting down Mike and extract or whatever. Oh my god, that's it. right, Mike and Pure. What <laughs> that's the true. Hell? It so could be told, worse. They told Niels Vagas that they could get uh, pure Mike. Down. Oh yeah, we can do that. <laughs> We've got it. That's my favorite thing to do. <laughs> oh, I have some right here, but this is for me. <laughs> I'll get more. I'll get yours. <laughs> All right. Uh, have a wonderful night, Let's everybody. Have a great week. We'll see you next week on Tabletop Notch. Good night, everybody. Bye.